go live button. All right, now Black Power, Black Power Radio TV, aka Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad TV. Everybody mute up, and National Chairman is on you. Black Power, Black Power, and a strong Black military to block our call for Black Power. We'd like to welcome you to yet another episode of Black Power Radio. I'm your host this evening, uh, Sheikh Ali Mam Akbar with uh, Strong Frontline. We've got Black Lightning, Brother Katie Walt, and many others that are chiming in. We've got Joe Black out in St. Louis. And showing love for black people is our duty, our responsibility, our commitment is to raise the level of black consciousness and raise the banner for black revolution. We believe that black revolution is the only solution. Uh, we have the most informative radio talk show on the internet, on your Facebook. If you take no look, we have the best that's on, uh, what is it, Twitter and Glitter, and I guess it's Instagram with no ham. If you're linked in, you can get linked out without a doubt. We give you more of what you actually listen to radio for, and tonight we're going to talk about black revolution being the only solution. And we have love in our hearts for black people, and we have uh, a manageable skill in managing the opposition to black revolution. So we must prepare to manage against our enemies, our open enemies, and, and it's not knowledge until you use it skillfully and effectively against your open enemy. We're happy to be here on Black Power Radio for the last 20 years or better, and talking about improving the conditions for we the people and, and changing the dynamics on the ground and the social political arenas across uh, this particular uh, world and then even into the Alkibulanian world or some call it the African world. I don't call it diaspora. I think it's all Alkibulan. So we take charge of all Black Panther property in view and that includes 196 million 940,000 square miles of the planet Earth. And if you watch the orange toupee guy and old Sleeping Joe, all they do is root about the planet as though they own this world. But I will tell you, this land belongs to us, we the people. And I will assure you, they are not of we the people at this hour. And I just say black power and a strong black military to black to call. We want to call for black revolution and we want to open our mics and our phone lines, our, our stream yard lines, and everything on YouTube, Facebook, and Glitter with Instagram, and get them all online to talk about black revolution. And let's talk about real black reparations and how to heal the wound. Uh, that we have been like a, a wounded animal trapped by a strange brand of iniquity and we are uh, in pain. They don't feel our pain. They can't tell you that they know how we feel or that they uh, can identify with our sentimentality because they know nothing about what we have been through because we don't even look like what we've been through, huh? A cracker said it one day saying what we wear it well. Huh? We're a little old-fashioned, but it's okay. But we wear it well. So we don't look like we, we've been through by our national minister of culture. Brother described, put that hit out, and I'm so damn glad that he did. And I'm so damn glad that you decided to tune into Black Power Radio. Could have went to the golf match with Tiger Woods down in Augusta and got you a green jacket tonight. But you passed up that opportunity to be with us here at Black Power Radio. And we're so proud to serve with you. And we are so proud to serve you. We're happy as we can be. Again, Sheikh Ali Mam Akbar with Black Lightning and others that are chiming in with Brother K. DeWalt. I got to get a hold of Big Warrior. Black Warrior is out there somewhere in this close atmosphere. And we'll all be at Tuesday at the E-Life. We're going to be at the E-Life restaurant in Capitol Heights, Maryland. It's a D.C. event for us to come together. Let us all pull together and for black unity, and for black power. 
and we have uh, just a multitude of things to offer the public in the way of organizing socially and politically against our opponents, against our open enemy, and we know how to manage against our enemies, and we hope that you will come in and get that kind of training, the kind of fortitude, the kind of brotherhood, the kind of sisterhood, the kind of motherhood, the kind of fatherhood, and by all means, we must go in and get and establish the continuity of our nationhood. Mm. And that's what our black nation, and that is what they say, we are a nation of, of people uh, trapped in a land that is really foreign to us. And we are a Kibolanian by character and by description. We come from the tribes of the Adapa, A-D-A-P-A, A-D-A-P-A. We come out of the Adapa, the original man, the original woman of the planet Earth, the first civilized being around here on the planet Earth. And we are the Akiba land. We are the Akiba land of Yons, And we are happy with this. We're happy with that description because that description dignifies us in a manner that we have never been dignified before. I will land my plane and pass the mic and say black power, black power, and a strong black military to black our call for black power. Black power? Black power. Black power. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to look at the order of the business here. It's hard for me to make out all the names. Uh, are you the, there, Brother K. DeWalt? Are you there? Black Lightning? Black Lightning and Katie Walt. Uh, we here, we here, we here. Black Power. I was just waiting on you to get that, and I wanted to bring a little music on the air. Here we go. Right after this music. Say if that's the hell below, we're all gonna go. So, welcome to the second broadcast of Black Power Radio TV. Oh, we, yes, I know, Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad TV. I know Doc smiling down on us right now. All I got to say is buckle up. Buckle up. Not because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Because it's going to be all that and a bag of chips. Because ain't nobody going to give it to you straight but us. Because ain't nobody got the nerve. They don't have what it takes to give it to you straight from the hip. We fire straight from the hip, you know. This is the New Black Panther News Network. New Black Panther uh, Boots on the Ground Network. So make sure everybody keeps the ball rolling. But we definitely need those funds to come on in. Because ain't nobody going to support us but us. You know, the more revolutionary we are, the, the least likely they are to even want to help. So the only people that are going to help you is us and the only way we're gonna get there is if y'all hit that dollar sign 77 baker but i can't say that because we've been getting there on our own dime but then when our bills start getting behind them and, and then our cars start breaking down y'all gonna ask where are the panthers so we already told you where we at we sitting on the side of the road with a blown up engine because y'all didn't send us the money to get that to rent that van, so we can get all the troops down there, nice, comfortably in the air conditioning, 
have everybody sleep along the way and uh, switch drivers. So by the time we get to y'all, it's not everybody exhausted, you know? Everybody been in 100 degree weather with a car that might not have air conditioning and now them black uniforms that made us sweaty and it's like, okay, like, nah. And we want to see our black revolutionaries looking sharp, you know? Like the um, like the United States military, when they come in, they done slept on the bus all the way there. So they aim is, aim is sharp. So we want our soldiers aim sharp, same way, you know? Like I say, don't worry, because if there's a hell below, they all going to go messing with our people. And like I said on a show earlier, which is when we get our reparations, we're going to need this black military to protect. Even if we don't get it, we still going to need our black military to protect our people, protect our neighborhood. They care less about us. If we don't protect us, they won't. Remember what happened in Black Wall Street in Tulsa? Shit, we don't want that happening no more. Not on this watch. This is the, see right there? I'm going to be honest with you. It's the Black Panther watch. Not letting that happen. Not up in here. Oh, yeah, in the container home. Definitely. I'm waiting on uh, Brother Alberto to come on up in here so he can show y'all about the uh, container home. Because we um, got a great idea and it's affordable too. And it's, and, and they were making them. They're making them uh, themselves, and you got to go out here and have somebody else to do it for you. And they'll be self-contained. We have solar panels, uh, so that the people will won't have to worry about the electricity. Don't worry, you did. And then they have the um, a really cool invention. I guess I've never heard of it, but it takes the waste and it burns it. So they don't even need water for that. And then the um, the showers, they have the uh, the water that recycles itself uh, into the shower until you get where you want to get to and uh, and put some fresh up in there, you know. So it's like that's going to really help uh, a lot of displaced people out there to survive through these harsh winters. And like I was talking to somebody earlier, it's like, wow, the winters are harsh, but you know what? The summers are harsh too. Hey, we just in July. We just entered in the first part of July. Look how hot it is. A hundred degrees? You can imagine by the time we get to August, it's going to be like the desert. And what about our people that are in the desert, you know? Out there on the, out there on the west side, you know? Down there in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Down there in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. They get 120 degrees when it ain't when it ain't crazy. So, like I say, don't worry, we here. But if we weren't here, there's plenty of reason to worry. Huh? Like you say, oh, Trump said he's going to give immunity to police. He said when they have to be a little rough. Ain't that some shit? Huh? When they when they get a little rough, he's going to give them carte blanche. He's going to say, it's okay, y'all police. So I, so it's like, okay. And now they give him, they trying to give him the same thing. Trying to give him the uh, the green light to say, oh, uh, you said you could shoot somebody in the middle of Times Square and wouldn't lose a voter. So guess what? You're not going to jail either. Mm -hmm. Want to pay hush money through Giuliani to uh, to a porn star? I'm like, man, don't y'all know this guy's just doing that for, 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 he's doing that to look good. See, it don't look, it, see, it don't sound good, but see, he, he know, he know that it looks good, you know? And see, while, while the rest of them look boring, he looked like a billionaire playboy, you know? He got porn stars running around. He said he can grab a woman by, by the crotch and, and they'll like it. Ain't that some, you know? I mean, um, we have the worst presidential candidates on record. <laughs> That's all I got to say about it. So.
And not only that, um, Biden, uh, Biden, he on a slip trying to trying to use uh, trying to use them slip tip words uh, uh, referring to black folks, you know. So if we're going to be all of that, then we don't need to vote for them. We need to write in uh, write in our own candidates. Um, so, uh, you know, I write uh, Sheikh Imam Akbar's name down there, you know. And if they if they're not even interested, they're not even interested in reparations. They're not even Trump. Like he's at least he's he's the honest one. I can say that he's a lying son of a bitch. But he's honest about one thing that uh, ain't nobody gonna give us. They're not even thinking about giving us reparations. I like what Doctor Collins said. You want reparations? Take your reparations. Hmm. And that's what we're gonna have to do. And by any means necessary can mean. We outsmart them. Hell, they're losing their stuff left and right, you know, because of the pandemic and stuff. And they're not able to go out here and work like they used to, you know, and they catching it. Uh, I even see uh, local rednecks that, well, let's not call them rednecks. Just let's call them what they are, uh, local racists, local racists that think they can just do whatever they want. But then when they start doing it in front of the each other, they don't play that stuff with each other. They start calling homeowners association. And next thing you know, you can't park all them cars on the grass and make 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 everything look hillbillyish no more. You know, see them moving uh, uh, the, the the old hound dogs out of the neighborhoods that was out there woo, and all that. They just figure they can just do whatever they want because uh, they say, well, we ain't disturbing nobody but that but that Black Panther next door. Or, or down the street, you know? So we so said, guess what? You disturb them white folks and they start calling on you. <laughs> I let them know, we don't call them. What we gonna call? I'm gonna call some, I'm gonna call some regiment. I'm gonna call part of the regiment. Come deal with this. Ha, <laughs> you dig? So I'll uh, pass the mic and uh, don't wanna hog it. I uh, just want to give it to y'all while I got a little bit of energy because we've been working on this thing diligently all night long. There's only, it's only one thing I usually do all night long. <laughs> That's why I got uh, three sons. <laughs> but uh, we got to do this for the people. The people are very important. Uh, John, Kim, and Shabazz, we're waiting for you. I see, I see you. I'm going. Check us out for a minute. Go find the next song. All right. All right. Okay, we got another guest coming up in here with us. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Hold on, y'all. Brother Black Joe, you must have dropped off. I got you, Black, in the house. 
All right, I was just about to drop the mic right into your hands anyway. Or, uh, wait a minute, where'd Brother KD go? I think they must have been traveling and dropped off. Hold on. I think that's KD right there at the door. No, that's not him, but he'll be back. Oh, internet issues? Okay, can you? Uh, can, uh, are you in now, brother? Would you like to drop uh, drop some gems while I um, find that James Brown? <laughs> Black power. I, I don't know what's going on with the connection. Everything that you had said prior to me getting back on, I didn't hear it. You had went silent. The, the whole app had went like stationary, but the live count was still counting. So yeah. I don't know what's going on with the, uh, with huh. the, yeah. See, first it was another brother said something about an internet connection, but if I'm having the same issue, it's not an internet connection. It's an app issue. Oh, okay. Well, every time y'all drop off, I see you coming back in. I'm putting him back on. Uh, brother KD might be traveling though, and he might be hitting dead spots. Mm-hmm. I'm totally stationary. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, you in, brother. You in. If you want to go ahead and, and give them some knowledge, I got to go find this James Brown real quick. Well, my my biggest thing is, uh, you know, police have no duty to protect. They also have qualified immunity. Uh, you got to be aware of the plain view doctrine, because even if you ain't doing nothing in the view of the law, you're doing something. Uh, another thing, they running out of traditional. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Which one? The plain view doctrine, because I'm not really familiar with it. I know National Chairman, he know it. I don't really know it. Anything in the plain view of a police officer slash confidential informant can and will be held against you. Now, your record can be clean. It don't matter. It don't. It doesn't matter if they're viewing you as a threat and you are a legal gun owner. That message can be relayed, and now the force changes when they run up on you. Now, the biggest thing about this is you don't know what they're looking for. It could be anything that can trigger a search warrant, a, a five-man stack outside your door with AR-15s. So, the, another another thing about this plain view doctrine is, um, I. I, I Look, I have, I have to be frank, the Pan-African thing, that's going to be the biggest threat coming up because there are no more real confidential informants that they can really use against people like they did um, in the early two, all the way up to the early to the um, 2000s to like the teens, to, you know, the 2000s to the teens. That was like they ran out of confidential informants because these youngsters, men and women nowadays, they're crashing out. You have to watch these pan-African immigrants. Think about it, gentlemen. Pan-Africanism has been one way for real. We got some riders in Africa. We got some riders in the Caribbean. We got some riders in Haiti. Don't get me wrong. But for the most part, since the 70s, pan-Africanism has been one way from us to them. You know, there's there's been no real olive branches from them to us. We have to have a bag when we go over there. You know, so. The thing is now, these folk that want their green cards, if we get reparations, we are the biggest threat to a lot of world governments right now. Reparations will reinvest into America. Yeah, you're gonna have some people that's leave, that leave, but for the most part, that money's gonna be reinvested into America. That'll put America in a place for the next 100 to 200 years that'll be basically untouchable unless they nuke it, kind of like now. So. The immigrants that are preaching the unity, watch them. Just, just, just watch them, because some of the stuff that comes out of their mouths, as far as aggression and um, deceit, it'll bring the whole. It, 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 uh, 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 um, a chain is as strong as its weakest link, and those be the weakest links. Once and another thing, bona fide background checks. Like it, there needs to be an investment into a fund to where you can run these people's names and get real background checks, not CaseNet, not, not your local lookup, 100% state and federal background checks. That will stop a lot of BS. That's all I got to say for right now. Uh, 
All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely need that. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, like I know that uh, if if it's done in front of them, of course they can they can do something about it. But now they're just like going crazy. It's like it's like even if it didn't happen, just the fact that somebody said it happened. Matter of fact, uh, there that's affecting the gun laws. Let me put my camera on. That's affecting the gun laws too. Like if um if somebody gets a uh, one of them uh, peace orders, stay away order, something like that, there, then uh then 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 you meet the the red flag uh uh, uh criteria, and anybody read the see that's the catch twenty two. They want to take all of our uh firearms, all of our protection away from us, and see they they can have domestic violence charges and still keep their guns. If we got a domestic violence charge, your guns are coming. They matter yeah. of fact, they probably come in your house with their guns drawn to take your to take your life, not your guns. They just using that as an excuse. Black power, yeah. Dr. Chairman, were you saying something? Oh, with Black Joe, go ahead. Uh, Black Black Power, brother. Um, see, you gotta understand since uh Jay Edgar Hoover cross dressing anyway, since Jay Edgar Hoover, man, it's 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 been a socialist communist changing of the guard and and we're almost there that's why the push to disarm us is so hard okay like you got to understand that when i see black folk um shitting on clarence thomas yeah he uncle tom sambo clarence thomas has done one thing he's kept arms in black folk hands screw who he's married to screw his politics his voting has kept us armed. If they pass a law right now outlawing weapons, it's going to only be one people in the population that's going to be at a disadvantage, and it's black people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you know, um, yeah, it, it's it's we we turn into a, a communist socialist state. You know, uh, uh I, I'm I'm not for capitalism, but communism and socialism has done one thing in each country, and that's led to democide. Democide is when the government comes in and totally deletes its citizens. You know, democide is North Korea. You know, uh, the de de democide is some of the shit that go on in Africa and the Congo with with them going back and forth where the governments wipe them out because they don't go and mine the mines for the Chinese and for the Europeans. Mm. So. And that's another thing. All these years, you mean to tell me that no one in Africa has reached out to no one over her African American and offered land to go over there and, and mine and mill for resources for everyone? Only this has been only offered to to Asians and Europeans. Come on, man. Come on, man. But you got Kenya going to Haiti right now. So watch that. That that may turn to a cluster duck. Mm -hmm. But that's all I wanted for right now, sir. Black power. Black power. Black power. I had to remove uh, Busy One because for whatever reason, I can't bring John Kim and Shabazz on. I thought maybe with too many people on, but it, it, we're having a bad connection or something tonight. Or maybe they just figured out who we were and decided to go ahead and do what they usually do. They can't stop us. Not really. Go ahead, National Chairman. I'm trying to bring Brother uh, John Kim and Shabazz on, but uh, some kind of connection. Uh, he, said he, he has. Um, I'm thinking we were message in the chat that his uh, sit situation would be right tomorrow. They get to go back to the uh, service provider for his mm -hmm. network on his phone service to make sure that he can get on. Now, Brother Crazy Horse is saying it won't allow him on. I don't know what the situation is, but. I, I had John you, Kim and Shabazz on for minutes. Can't get off, sir? Yeah, mm. go right ahead. But that's a strong point that um, Brother Joe Black is talking about the Chinese, huh? And those other Euro nations. But when you went to uh, high school, you said it about the continents were, uh, I think, North America, cuck, cuck, cuck. You put a lot of emphasis on that. Mm -hmm. South America, cut, 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 with the three caves. Same snakes are biting us everywhere. But they had Africa as a continent. And I believe every time we say Africa, we are a co-signing, giving a passport 
mm-hmm. for them to establish yet another colony in Africa to mm-hmm. take more natural and, re- and mineral resources and to take us as cargo as human resources. And I'm saying to you straight up, they had the year as, as something and they had Asia as something. But when you went back to go for uh, junior college, for instance, they had something called Eurasia. Mm-hmm. Meaning the European and the, and the Chinaman has teamed up to privilege even more from our motherland, from the al line. So the tricks of the, of the opposition become evident once you begin to look into that adapter and look into the al line and look into our real natural resource, mineral resources. We even claim this to be our land. There are whole groups of people out here claiming this is our land. Why are they fucking with us on our own land? They, they got a whole different philosophy when it comes to say, well, they had, uh, according to the Honorable uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, we had graveyards here a few thousand years before Columbus. And there's evidence of the pyramids and evidence of the statues that have been built. But the Eurasian is always trying to change the features on the statue, change the pictures, put pointed nose, or old Chinaman looking nose or, or pointed nose. Why is that so important? Hmm? Yeah. Because they, they want to erase the Alkibolanian presence in America and throughout the world. I'll land on that fact, but that's a strong point, uh, Brother Joe Black. Very strong point. That the Ch- Watch that Chinaman and that European, because he's going to team up eventually with the redneck and the Zionists, and they're going to circle the wagons on your behind if they can, mm-hmm. and they will come and set you up. Is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And come back and take what you have. Is that right? Your mineral, natural resources. And the Amber Marion Barrett taught me, a social, political, and a chemical scientist, Said when they come back the next time, they're coming back to kill you. Oh, Black yeah. power. Black, Black power. power. Oh shoot. Uh, brother, okay. You black in now, brother Joe. Um, I don't know why we keep um, I think I can bring brother John Kim and Shabazz in too, actually. All right, I got you in this time, brother John, big John, Kim and Shabazz. You might as well drop it like it's hot while you're still on. <laughs> Are you there? Can you hear us? Can you can you unmute your line? Give us an update on what's going on down there with the Eccles case. We having some connection issues, so I don't know why it keeps going off. Unless there's a storm brewing up there somewhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait a minute. I just had Brother John. Oh man, your connection. You might be in a bad spot or something, but I had you on there for a minute. I got you black on, Brother Joe, Black Joe. What were you saying about the gold? Um, I know they were saying Fort Knox is empty. It's like ain't no gold no more. The gold, they must have, shit, they probably done stole the gold. They say Fort Knox been empty since the 90s. Yeah. Uh, China uh, been hollowing out gold gold bars and putting Thompson and stuff in the middle of them. Um, but my point about this gold thing is you got to understand, once again, since the Pan-African movement started, there has been no olive branch from Africa. We, black folk here have always had money. The, the, the money conversion wouldn't have been ish to go over there and invest in mining equipment and, and, and make some of these precious resources work for both sides, okay? There's been no olive branch. Now that we may get reparations, there's this we or family thing going on, and I, I, I'm not feeling that. But secondly, secondly, you got Russia over there with all the bases, and you got China over there with all the mining equipment, and they want to bring up bricks. Everyone's talking about how bricks this, how bricks that. Man, Africa is hella tribal, man. Uh, it, it, I don't, I don't, I think that they put all their eggs in one basket, and and that might not be the way that the Eurasian continent shouldn't go, because Europe and Asia have combined, and they call it the Eurasian continent now. Okay. Um. So my point about this is, all right, 
you uh between the BRICS go back uh go back dollar Russia and China being over there and them wanting pan Africanism stronger than they ever did right now the FBA ADOS is at risk like for a lot like this this is worse than your confidential informant her with a body on him okay cuz like i say if we get reparations we will totally hurt the world. That's everybody. If you're not an ally of the U.S., you're hurt. You're at the will of the U.S. If we get reparations. I don't want nobody to look past that because it's going to be a lot of us don't leave. And the ones that do leave, they're going to face xenophobia wherever they go. So, it, what? oh, also look up on YouTube because Google has kind of scrub this look up african xenophobia for african americans man they've been deleting elder black women over there younger black women they've been deleting black men who who moved there from the u.s and didn't look back to the u oh we've been getting deleted in africa so yeah you gotta pay the police you you gotta you got it good here yeah we dealing with this racism shit and something to be done with it, and i'm not allowed to speak freely but you go anywhere else you're at the will of the government. You like I'm not saying we're not at the will of the government here, but anytime you can look over and grab a gun, anytime you can go online and say what you want to say without the state running up on you and fucking you up. Yeah. But that's that's all I want to say. You gotta watch the immigrants right now because they are probably gonna be the biggest threat to any movement, any foundational black, uh, or um, however you want to put that, any any black organization that was founded here in America that deals with American black issues is at threat right now. That's all. Black pop. Sorry about that. I dropped off again. Black. Black power, black power. Oh, boy. I see everybody in there, but I don't hear nothing. Oh, shoot. Wait a minute. Uh, National Chairman, um, um, can you chime in? I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I think we're being sabotaged here, <laughs> honestly. But Brother Joe keeps dropping off, and can't nobody come in, and I'm just, I drop off just because I touched the wrong thing on the screen. Uh, Black Power, Black Power, uh, Busy One, can you hear me? National Chairman, can you hear me? This is this is major from Busy One. Uh, I can currently hear you right now. Uh, there has been uh, the signal had dropped on and off a couple of times. Um, yeah. I'll, yeah, right now um, your signal is uh, is 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 kind of weak, but it's still coming in. So we are uh, right now. We got you still coming in for right now. Okay, great, great. All right. Well, I guess while. Um... Waiting on everybody to come in. I hit a little musical interlude. <laughs> I think I had a had a request for a say it loud. <laughs> so let's drop it like it's hot. And national chairman, whenever you get your mic right, you can drop it like it's hot. I will say, as long as I'm on here, that um, this this man. Is boots on the ground. I mean, serious boots on the ground. See, I was looking for a, a real revolutionary to lead the way. I thought I was going to lead the way, really. I said, ain't no way. I'm following him. And um, there's a difference between 
an activist and a revolutionary. See, the activists, they there while the sun's up. But when the sun go down, we still black folks on the ground. Hold on, I get Black Joe, man. Sorry about that, Black Joe. Uh, uh, little connection issues. But I was saying that um, I was just giving the uh, national chairman some um, flowers that he's really deserved, you know? I see activists out there, they be out there while the sun's up, you know? And then when the sun go down, you don't see them. But well, I tell you what, hey, when the sun go down and the flash bang grenades be hitting the air and uh, you see the um, National Guard jumping out of uh, big old buses and stuff, we still there, you know? So, I'm just saying, he don't leave, he don't leave from the middle. He, he never lived from the middle. He never got in the back of the crowd and said, y'all go that way. He said, yo, follow me. And I'm like, shoot, I'm right beside you. I ain't going to be behind you. I'm going to be right beside you. Because when the shit hit the fan, I'm going to get the fan with it. But I'm a, I'm a shit hit the fan kind of guy. <laughs> At least they found that out, you know. Well, hey, we black, and uh, we say it louder because we blacker and prouder. I'm looking for James Brown, but uh, I like I like Chuck D. Hey, what can I say? So uh, while we getting everybody's mic together, I figure I'd drop a little, drop some music, you know. I'm gonna get my band on here so we can do a Simon cast. I'm gonna call one crowd, I'm gonna call a bass player, call the guitar player, we're gonna triple call, plug it into the um into the PA board, do it just the way we do it. You know? Sometimes you gotta go brilliant. You gotta have that brilliance mode. But it ain't about us right now. It's about I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. It's like yo, when I see um Ahmad Arbery and uh see George Floyd and I see all the people marching, they moved out the way like the Red Sea. We parted it like the Red Sea. We start coming down the we start coming down the street. And it was like Nat Turner, you know. It was like Nat Turner when Nat Turner was coming down the street, and they started with two, and then there was three, and then there was ten. Next, you know, this fifth, you know, that's just what happened. We was going down, we was going down 16th Street toward the White House. By the time we got to the White House, boy, we must have had about ten thousand people behind us. You know, and I literally mean behind us. We don't live. We don't leave. He ain't leave from the back. We ain't, he ain't point the finger and say, "Y'all go get him." Uh uh National chairman say, "Hey, I'm leading this, bitch, and we gonna go get him." Yes. So I'm just giving that big salute out to you, big, big. Uh, I say the big dog. <laughs> They either rock wild and I'm the doubleman. Don't get it twisted. Hell, we like fast reeds and light horse. You know? I mean, really, it's damn near like reincarnation. Bass Reed look like the shaky mom Osborne. Shoot, a light horse look like me. <laughs> and don't get it twisted. I'm black Apache. You know? It's like, yo, I, I uh, my ancestors, my ancestors say, go take some scouts, you know. The national chairman say, we ain't gotta take no scouts, but if they fuck up, we're gonna take scouts. So, like I said, we here to uh, excuse my language, ladies and gentlemen, but we here to um, we here to protect our people by any means necessary, you know. So when we get to reparations. That's going. It's going. Uh, you can chime in anytime, Black Joe. Uh, that 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 we get them reparations. It's going to stimulate the economy. You know, because we're going to put it right black into the economy. You know, and I really don't know anybody in their right mind that wants to go to a, a foreign country that they've never been to and say, "I'm going back." Okay, I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm. I'm going back to Indiana, like the song, like Michael Jackson said. 
You want to drop me off somewhere? Drop me off in East St. Louis. <laughs> I like what Red Fox say. Red Fox say, um, and say, go back there. He say, take me back to St. Louis. He's like, yo. He said, what I look like in the Congo wearing a three thousand dollar mohair suit and some alligator shoes. He say, shoot. Drop me off at the big chair down in D.C. I know my way home from there. You know, man asked me one time. He said, I'll give you a ride. Which way you going? I said, it really doesn't matter. You can go north, I go home. South, I go home. North, east, west, I'm still going to be at home. You know? He said, it really don't matter. If you take me that way, I got family down there. So just drop me off. You know? So, But if you drop me off in uh, Nairobi, I'm like, I can see me calling my cousins and them. Say, man, come pick me up. He said, where you at? I'm at the Nairobi airport. He said, man, you on your own. <laughs> so you got down there, didn't you? You better get back. You know? So I'm just saying, I'm actually, I started off giving the chairman his due because I'm the type of brother I ain't going to follow blindly. Me and Black Joe, we ain't following blindly. Oh, we Black Joe. We ain't following nobody blindly. You better really be about this shit. You know, I ain't putting a rifle in nobody's hand that I know ain't got the heart to shoot it when it's time. You know, I don't want nobody holding their rifle up in the air talking about I give up. Huh? Shoot. Seen that picture of A.J. Frazier standing in front of that police car with that big 50 cal. Hey, I asked him, I said, did they get out the car? He said, oh, hell no. <laughs> they bet not. <laughs> Shit. What you want to do? You want to get out? You want to get out and draw your weapons on? On a on a real soldier? Nah, man. You wanna you wanna draw it on somebody that 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 acting tough and carrying guns. You don't want to mess with no real. So that's what we are. Real black military come to black that call. And that right, national chairman. Um, uh, test your mic, sir. I've been trying to call on you. Uh, you you still in here with us? I see you, but can you can you can you be heard? Black power. Uh well okay how about you brother uh, brother Black Joe I think it's, I think it's on us I think it's on us until they get their mics together <laughs> yeah my my mic work I'm I'm just I, I just don't want to play with this app right now that's all you know yeah all right I got John Kim and Shabazz in the house all right Black Power give us an update on the Eccles case and what's going on down there in Fairmont West Virginia Black Power. You you must be muted. Uh, the the mic button is at the bottom. Just make sure that uh, that it's not uh, crossed off. I'm Can you hear me now? Yes, Are you sir. Hearing me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Black power. Uh, peace, everybody. We uh we got a a rally scheduled for July eighth. We're going to have a press conference at ten thirty in front of the courthouse, and. I'm going over to Fairmont tomorrow to pass out flyers and post flyers. I'm not talking real loud or long about this. I want to be able to actually get some action in. And that means that we are prepping for this rally. Uh, the one that we had in November, uh, Precious Eccles, the daughter of Charles Eccles, she just drove in from North Carolina. And we didn't do prep for that. And we had a, between 30 and 50 people that came. Uh, more people would have been there for the first rally if Precious had done a, a, uh, a flyer, which is typically what you do. You have to kind of prep the people locally and let them know. The last rally, we didn't let people know. This one, I think we got a strong response from the local people. Okay, a lot of people wanted to be at the first rally, wasn't able to be there. We're getting a strong response, and I got to go over there to make sure that they're going to be there. Hands on, okay. Like internet is good, but you also have to do hands on. Get out in the street, and let people look at you face to face, smile at them, shake their hand. So this is a campaign. We're not running for office. We're running to get justice for this man, okay. And I know, I know you all feel the same way. So I won't be long, but we got to come strong, okay. So I know that the people are there with us. I went and checked locally. 
look like they're there with us and we asking for support nationally. So Flyer speaks for itself. We got activist John Barnett. He's pledged to come in and uh, he's on the flyer. Um, we do have one or two local people that do hip hop. I think they're going to be there to perform. I got to go over to make sure that we can get some of those people there who were there at the first rally. So I'm going to be posting the first rally too as part of the campaign for the second rally to give you an idea of the people that were to bring the first, to bring the people that were at the first rally. We want to bring them back to the second rally, plus bring an overwhelming number of people. We want him to look out the window and see when, when we say him, we want the prosecutor, Jeff Freeman, to look out the window and see this ground swell of support for the arrest of the individuals that killed Charles Duddy Eccles III on July 30th, 2023. Just about one year ago today. Also, I have to give you another update and tell you that I received a, a uh, an order from the judge today. Uh, this is the second judge that we've asked for his disqualification due to bias. So he sent it down to the Supreme Court. This is the first time that the Eccles case has reached down to Charleston. Okay, so they're going, the Supreme Court is going to take a look at it and see whether or not they're going to remove this second judge for bias. Mind you, the first judge removed himself, disqualified himself for bias. And so if this judge could be disqualified for bias, we, the case has had bias from the very beginning, from the failure to arrest anyone. Here you get people busted red handed. They tell you it was a fight and we had to kill him. And I, no, all you had to do was hold the guns on him and call the police. That's what you should have did. But you didn't do that. OK, you killed them. OK, so. Somebody got to go sit down. Now, we asking for both of these people to go sit down to be uh, arrested and indicted. The evidence is there. The prosecutor has a videotaped admission from both of these individuals that he's sitting on. Using it as a defense for them, as justification for not arresting. Claiming that Eccles was a burglar. When he got in, he didn't break in, he got into the into the garage and through the passcode in the garage that's how he got into the into the uh, residence and he's the ex-lover of this woman we're currently working on doing a, a, a complete profile of these killers meaning that we want their pictures we know they're still working in the jail we're getting reports that they are celebrating living the good life letting everybody know we we, we don't have no remorse no guilt about what happened. You should be guilty. You should feel guilt. So we're in a position where we're working to, we're forced to civilize, we're forced to civilize these people. Okay, just to the extent that justice has to be, we, we, we have to uh, make justice. And part of making justice means that we're forced to have to civilize these people. So I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, anybody got any questions that they want to ask at this time, they can ask those questions. Are we still there? Are we st yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I was, I was starting to talk and I remember I got to unmute myself. <laughs> uh, brother Joe, uh, what was that, um, about the, um, uh, the, if you, if you want to, uh, ask them about that or the civil lawsuit. Ask him uh, about that. Okay. Any, they didn't offer any civil lawsuit at least, like to to the to the family or anything, because I, I already see how the the judges in the courts playing that. Right, right, right. Now, uh, we've had difficulty finding an attorney for this family, and uh, I think a local news reporter who's not from this area, he's a, a, a Hispanic fellow. He, at least seven months ago. He recommended to the family that they get an attorney and file a lawsuit against local officials. But we've been looking and we haven't been able to find one in the state that's willing to take this case. I, I had to get looked locally. Nobody wants to touch it. I'm down in Charleston looking around. I think I got one fella that's looking at it. 
but I don't think he wants to touch it either. So the bottom line, we had to, we're going to have to go national, somebody with some juice, somebody with, pardon the expression, but big balls. Okay. You know, but you know, I, I need to say this, this prosecutor is weak. He's using his status. Okay. He's hiding behind his status as prosecutor. Nobody usually questions the prosecutor. And if somebody does question the prosecutor, he can, he can do some, I'm white and I say so. Just be, and that's what he's been doing. He's been get, getting away with things based on the fact that he's the prosecutor and uh, he has the credibility and credentials, supposedly, that, that nobody has really challenged him. But we are challenging him and, and he's getting busted. Okay. We've busted him several times. And so it, this, the fire is getting hot up under that ass. Okay, and we look to make the fire a little hotter come July. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I, uh, I'm tame in my expressions. I'm I'm not ranting and raving because uh, I, we're gonna save that. I want to see some other people rant and rave. Uh, we want to present the facts and the legal authorities to back up those facts. Oh, yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to I'm trying to stay reserved, so they'll make the mistake of giving me the megaphone, and I'm the ranter. <laughs> Actually, they probably already caught wind of it. Say, no, nah, don't give it to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to say something to my. Uh, yes, sir. I want to say something else that uh, the local people and my my stepfather recently passed. He was a He's an old school dude from over in that area for the last, well, he, he'd been over there for the last 60 years, but he's an old school coal miner, very much respected from out of that community. And I took time to go over there for his funeral. That community come out and showed love. It was at Morningstar Baptist Church, the largest black church in the area. And again, they showed love and we want to go back and have the same kind of love for Charles Eccles to make sure he gets justice. It's there, okay? And we have to reach out to one another and cultivate that. And I, I think we're gonna do that. I think we're gonna do that, okay? So I'll be sure to videotape it because I know if you don't videotape or record anything good that you do, you didn't do anything. You gotta be able to prove the good that you do. So we plan on being able to prove the good that we're going to do for this man. So we'll be recording. Okay. Yeah. Um, you say it never happened. <laughs> that's, you, know, you, you, you got to do that. You got to document. You, know, you got to document your work or else they'll say it never happened. That's right. That's right. Stay strong, brother. I heard in your voice, man. Stay strong. I'm strong, bro. I just, uh, I'm going to get my rest and, uh, Take care of myself. Make sure I work out, get strong, and I, I, and I'll be all right. I'll, I'll be all right. Uh, <clears throat> I, I get support. I get strength from the people, and I don't try to overextend myself. I think I have been doing a lot of work on this case, uh, uh, free litigation for the family. Uh, prosecutor has told me in so many words to stay in my lane. Mm. Okay. But I but we've been strong enough to look him in the face and tell him you're an error. OK, and I've talked about it before. He he's given the killers castle doctrine and he's you took in castle doctrine and raised it up above the West Virginia Constitution and the United States Constitution. So we've told them the, we've told him this to his face. OK. And so, and it's not like we're going to stop saying it to his face. He's got to give us some facts and some and some cl conclusions of law. You want to raise castle doctrine? You got to bring up some some legal authorities to back up what you say. And he has not put forth any legal authorities to back up the use of castle doctrine in this instance. So, so the fire is under that ass, okay? And by now, it's getting kind of red. Up under that ass. All okay. right now. Yes. Sir. I don't know. I'm not. Yes, I appreciate everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in. 
to, to listen to what I had to say. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I want to, uh, yes, we'd love to be able to get that litigation in, meaning that if we can't find a lawyer to do it, I, I will do it myself, at least to get it started. We're not going to let the time run out and not get the litigation in it. In this state, a civil suit, after an incident, you have two years to file a civil suit. Okay. Depending upon what type of incident it is. Some, some of them, some incidents, it's only a year. Other incidents, such as in a, a wrongful death situation, you got two years. Okay. So, you know, we just had a year pass. So we got another year. And uh, so we're going to look for a lawyer to put that lawsuit in for the family. Yep. But, but that's about it today, uh, uh, folks. That's that's it. That's the update. Really appreciate that because uh, we need everybody that's uh, that's going to that's, that's hearing it now live and everybody that's going to hear it later to be uh can give them that location and that date one more time so we can we need everybody out there and everybody that's in that area y'all are already right there come on uh so that's gonna be a fairmont right uh brother that's gonna be, yes that's gonna be at the marion county courthouse fairmont west virginia that is 219 adam street it's on Jackson and it's on Jackson and Adams Street. You can't miss it because the courthouse is right smack in the middle of town. You're not gonna miss that. But that's what it is. Marion County Courthouse, July 8th, 10 30 is the press conference. After that is the rally. Okay. National activist John C. Barnett scheduled to come in. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. I met that. I met that brother, and uh, I believe it was we was in North Carolina, wherever Ga Galstonia is. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. I don't know where it's where Gaston. I've heard it before. I don't know exactly where it's at, but yeah, it was, it was a case down there where um, uh, <clears throat> the people were down there protesting. The uh, they have a, the, I don't know. I think they got it down. Uh, a a, a conf like a Confederate statue in front of the courthouse and uh we went down there because uh, <clears throat> uh a young lady lydia uh mccaskill uh she was uh thrown out of an ice cream parlor for having the black lives matter shirt on <laughs> and then uh, and then um and i believe she was like uh even assaulted you know they threatened her with guns and stuff and and the next thing you know, um, uh, the police come and instead of helping the lady, they they tell her to get on down the street like they like doing. They told me that, and I was like, mm, yeah, okay. Now, now, now I'm here to stay. So I'm just like you, brother John. They tell us get on down the street. Oh well, now now you got a problem. <laughs> so now you're gonna have to make me get down the street. This ain't gonna happen easily. So um, yeah, what all these her? incidents. Yes, go ahead. Sir, go ahead. No, I was just saying you, you have all these incidents where the police are called, people call the police for help, but then the police uh, uh, socialize in, in a certain type of way that you call them for help, but then they turn around and next thing you know, you being arrested because the way they socialized, yeah. the way that they're the indoctrination that they receive in their training. Mm -hmm. Okay. I saw the video. Mm -hmm. they, the police was telling her, they're gone across the street. And she was like, there's traffic. The cars are coming back and forth. He said, look, I told you to get down the street and arrested her. You know, they did not <laughs> expect us to show up at dawn. Unannounced. That's the way you're supposed to do it, too. I ain't got no flyer letting them know we on the way. Shoot, it dawn. <laughs> we was right in front of that. We shut that uh, ice cream parlor down. And there was a few of them that really thought, uh, well, uh, they can stand there and 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 and, uh, and we still gonna sit right here on the side and and and, and smirk about it. And that's when I, that's that's when I uh, found out Commander Blackbeat. Uh, uh, rest is, uh, God uh, rest in peace, uh, uh, Commander Black. He won a won a, a great uh, great uh, Black Panther uh, uh, leader. 
um, one of my teachers, uh, mentors. Um, I, see, I wasn't I wasn't prepared to sit there and watch them smirk and laugh about it. See, I was kind of you know. Now I'm getting I'm getting more seasoned now, so it's like okay, I know don't leave the line because maybe that's what they want you to do. They want you to leave that end so that that end is not protected. So I'm yeah. like, man, and y'all ain't gonna sit there and laugh about this. I said, look. I'm coming back there. And I started marching my, and then and as soon as I stepped the, in their direction, Commander Black uh, grabbed me by the shoulder. He said, you see where you, he said, they want you to come back there because I want you on this corner right here. He said, because if they come around that corner, you'll see them and, and, and you'll let us know uh, that we got trouble coming. He said, but if you go deal with them right now, that's when the trouble going to come around that corner. And I said, you're right. They trying to, they con me into coming around that corner because they, because they smirking and they laughing and I can't stand it. Not going to laugh at us uh, uh, when, 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 when y'all, when, when, when y'all, uh, I mean, when they, whoever it is, when they, when they, when they rear that ugly head of, 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 of like, 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 like y'all ain't nothing. We ain't afraid and we'll do it again. We'll do it in front of you. We'll laugh right here. I tell you what, I don't know, but I, they got the message because it was a few of them on the side of that building. When I started heading towards them and Commander Black stopped me, I looked back and a bunch of them was gone. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. gone. It was like, yo, I don't know about the rest of them with the rifles, but the guy with the nightsticks is coming back here, you know? I was like, I ain't coming back with it. I ain't coming back with no handguns. I ain't coming back with no rifles. I was like, I got these two uh, 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 them snap batons where you flip them out. I had two of them. I said, like, shop. I flipped them joints out. Commander Black said, hold on, soldier. <laughs> He's like, don't go back there. So I'm just saying, um, we more seasoned now than ever. We know uh, how to do this, and we'll we'll bl we'll black that call with jo with brother John Kim and Shabazz uh, every single time, and um, we'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there, one way or another, by any means necessary. Black Power really appreciate you too. Hold uh, black Power, and uh, I, I I will continue to keep y'all posted. The flyer is out there, and uh, I'm gonna be uh, like I said, I'm gonna be headed that way. And and I do believe in doing things in a stealth kind of way where necessary. Me too. You know, that's how the Panther is. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, he can be direct and he can be stealth. So you yeah. got to know when to be direct and know when to be stealth. You, yeah, you yeah. got to be able to use actual strategy, you know. So, mm -hmm. so, so I appreciate being on the line with like-minded folks, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Shout out to Brother Akbar once again for, for holding it down. Shake your mom, Akbar, Sister Truth Bay, uh, everyone. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. yeah. And, uh, and, and, and then that's another thing. I learned that right. Matter of fact, I learned that from National Chairman that day. He's like, I know you're not parking in front of the place, are you? I was like, no, we park around the corner. He's like, that's where you do it. <laughs> you know? And then when we, and then, and then the people say, wait a minute, this ain't the protest. See, y'all came down here to stand up for the sister, but y'all know y'all didn't know about that Confederate uh, statue, did you? And I'm like, no. They said that's where the protest at, and I'm like, really? I'm like, okay. Uh, but see, half of the troops had already left, and by the time we found that out, and we went down there to join them on that protest, and that's when I found out that they come out in the L shape, and they had those, uh, uh, they had those. Uh, I ain't never seen police with camouflage fatigues on, and 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 that that wasn't no police. That was a that was a that was a daggone uh, uh, kill squad, you know. And, and matter of fact, they they had the uh uh the 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 slave the slave catcher squad, you know. And um, they they started walking towards the crowd. And, I mean, they easing up on the crowd, and all of a sudden. Uh, it's like we didn't. They waited. They waited until we started uh, back to the vehicles, and I was like, "That was what Shake was talking about." See, the ones that got jammed up was the ones that was parked across from that daggone uh, uh, courthouse. But the rest of us, we parked all the way up the street. 
You know, mm. uh, I made sure I park right near uh, the end. So that if we got to make a, if we can make a, a, a quick uh, exit, I was like, we right here at the street. You know, I made sure my car was right there. As a matter of fact, I parked my car so that I could drive over the grass onto the street if I had to. As soon as we get down there at the car, uh, some people uh, 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 say they ran up and they said they down there jamming y'all's comrades up. I'm like, what? So we ran back down the hill. We came over that hill so damn strong. That's why I say, hey, I, hey, shoot, uh, Panthers don't play. I've never seen that much strength uh, uh, before in my life. And I mean, I've been with some strong brothers, but not like that. Uh, we rushed up. We rushed up on them so fast, so furious. Uh, this one cop, he fell over backwards. <laughs> he fell over backwards. They had all that camo on. Had to, he was looking like a super soldier himself. He fell over backwards because a panther woman ran up on his ass. <laughs> and I remember the big uh, big 300 pound dude. He didn't have time to put his shoes on. He was rushing up on him in socks. I was like, boy, these man, we not playing with these folks. And then I said, wait a minute, hold up. I think we need to double back and call uh, Chairman Emeritus Malik Zulu, Zulu Shabazz. So we we gonna need some le we gonna need some legal help right now, you know. So I called Malik. And Malik say, double back, you know, you know, fall back, fall back. I'm on my way, you know. So uh, right. and then the people say the people say, well, uh, y'all came to help us. And guess what? We got we got they bond, whatever it is. I was like, wow. And then the others are like, and we got their legal, we got their legal defense fund, wherever it is. And that's where I saw John Bernard. <laughs> it sure was. That's when I saw him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I just thought that was memoir of a Black Panther. I needed to throw it out there. Black power. Well, you look, brother, you need to go ahead on and put that book out, right? That put put in the book. Prepare yeah, your story. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't want to talk too much about that. It, that's an individual thing, right? No, but it also is an expression right. of the group. Yeah, yeah that's, you're right. You share your story. You're right. And then, and then it's like, you know, it's like that's our history. They don't tell our history. They tell their history. You know. I mean, when they say when they when they talk about strong Black Panthers and they show uh, back in the day with uh, 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 Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, Eldridge Cleaver and them. But, but, but when they show when they show that brother with the socks on, they be like, man, that's a bad dude right there. So he ran up on him with socks on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like, well, man, I, I can't do that. My feet hurt. <laughs> Sir. Well, you know, the, the, the nation is getting ready to celebrate uh, 60 years of the civil rights movement. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I, now look, we just recently done the Juneteenth over here and the local NAACP came mm -hmm. and uh, they invited me to a program that they're going to be doing tomorrow at July 2nd. And I'm not sure that I will go because I have a problem with the local NAACP and I told them to their face. Uh, they have not pushed for the use of the Eyes on the Prize uh, civil rights documentary in public school system curriculum. I say Eyes on the Prize, it's not perfect, but it's one of the, it's pretty close to perfect. Uh, they don't, here, here's what's going on. Public education has rejected the Eyes on the Prize civil rights documentary series because of the it, civil rights turns into black power in that documentary series. I don't know if any who I don't know who who has all seen it, but the the Dies on the Prize series shows the transformation. Civil rights transformed into black power. It shows the Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale. And public education has a problem with the Black Panthers. No doubt about it. But the Black Panthers are part of the civil rights movement. 
Kwame, Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Ture is part of the civil rights movement. You can't omit them. You can't omit the Republic of New Africa. Okay. But they want to no. omit them. They want to omit that. It's from our hip from our story, right? So we got to be able to get that. We got to push for the eyes on the prize to get into public education. Mm -hmm. So black students can have that information. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure I put that out there so people know that we got to continue to push for education. They're trying to uh, remove black studies completely and give you an intersectionalist approach. Okay, and they, uh, there's, there's been some pushback against it, but the intersectionalist approach would uh, combine the civil rights movement with the gay pride movement. Mm. Okay, so be on the lookout for that and put a stop to that when and where possible. Because yeah. I do it. I, yeah. I, I put a stop to it when and where possible. It, it, okay, we have pledged that the Juneteenth is under our command. We will not intersect it with the LBGT movement or uh, the state's birthday, which is on June 20th. We have pledged that we will not allow the inter 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 intersect with either one of those. Juneteenth must stand on its own. I saw it, I saw it with my own eyes, brother. Uh, when we were protesting uh, uh, George Floyd, um, um, I saw uh, people with uh, Black Lives Matter uh, uh, stuff on, and they, I don't know if they did that un intentionally, but they chose nothing but, uh, but uh, man, they, nothing but transvestites and, and, and dress wearing black men uh, to be down there. Uh, uh, and it's like they, they wanted uh, 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 everybody to think that, that was uh, what we about. And I was like, nah, we ain't about that, you know, uh, which is why we were over here talking about uh, how, well, I was talking about how Juneteenth uh, was denied uh, to us uh, two years. We, we were two years past the Emancipation uh, Proclamation because they said, well, uh, after the last slave have to turn 18 or whatever was 20 or whatever, uh, yeah. and after they turned 21 or whatever in Galveston, Texas, that's when the uh, last slave was freed. So it's like two years past that. And here it is. I'm trying to tell the people that, and I see uh, Black Lives Matter moving closer and closer and closer. While I was talking, saying every time I say something, uh, this uh, this 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 homosexual was saying, "Say his name," and I said, "Hold on, y'all. I'll be right back." I walk over, I said, "Can I see that megaphone?" I took it. And I said, and I said, now I got two megaphones. I'm gonna keep on doing what I was doing. And I walked back over where I was at, and then somebody said, "Uh, you mind if they have their megaphone back?" <laughs> I was like, they ain't gonna come over here and interrupt that thing. I'll go take their megaphone if that's what it takes. You know, I said, because they're not a representative of black folks. What they representing is that somebody paid them. And they say I'm all I I'm not even gonna I'm I'm I I'm not I'm not holding up I'm not gonna hold back. They said it was George Soros that paid them to come out there and do that to represent black homosexuals, making it look like that's what black folks are about. Well, at least that's what I heard. I really don't know that part of it to be true, but that's what I heard. You know, well, that's and, a, there, uh, there's an effort to weaken us. Now there's an effort to weaken the Black Panther movement, because I was studying Huey P. Newton, and it was said that while he was in prison, the government gave him, uh, put drugs in his food to try to train his, change his hormonal balance to make it, to effeminize him. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know how many people know about this or not. Yeah, they deliberately attempted to effeminize Huey P. Newton while he was in jail. Mm -hmm. So yeah. go deeper than that. Let's go deeper than that. Okay. Uh, brother, brother Pete, out. we got brother Pete on the line with us. Black power. Black power. Black, black power. power, brother Pete. So all you men out there that have high blood pressure, before you take the high blood pressure medicine, go to your pharmacist and ask your pharmacist what what medication they gave you and what it will do to you. 
they have high blood pressure medicine that they're giving black men that takes away their sex drives and, and like the brother said, gives them that, that feminine, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just say hormone for lack of better words, okay? But uh, yeah, the high blood pressure medication does that as well, okay? If you're taking high blood pressure medication and your ankle starts swelling up, you don't have gout. Stop taking your blood pressure medication. Go back to your doctor, to the doctor, or find another doctor, and tell them exactly what's going on. All right, your ankles are swelling up from the medication that they give you. Next thing is when you're dealing with that situation, make sure you're not dealing with a practitioner, a, a, a practicing uh, doctor. Make sure you have you have an actual graduate doctor dealing with you. Thank you. Thank you for that information, brother. Uh, I would also want to add on to that. Oh, go ahead. Excuse me, brother. Yeah, that, that didn't just happen with Huey. It happened with all the, the, the prisoners. It happened okay. with our prisoners, our political prisoners every day. You know, so let's not narrow it down to just Huey because, you know, there right. are a lot of brothers out there that need our help. Okay. Um, with what happened today, I'm uh, sad to say, but the playground, the playground is now closed. You know, it's time to find out who the revolutionaries really are. You know, they just gave this man immunity. Okay, they made him a king. Mm -hmm. About Trump, right? Uh, the immunity they gave to Trump. Yep, and I, I, I was first hands. I was there when Trump get, put tear gas on the, the movement in front of the White House, threw tear gas and horses on them just to come out there and hold the Bible upside down. I was there. I witnessed all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. this is what yeah, you get ready right to get. Mm -hmm. Yep, Mayor Lightning was up there with him. Yeah, we was. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we was on that front line for that one as well. And this stuff is ridiculous, man, and they are doing things to uh, try to deter you from your black revolution. Man. Um, all the mess, all of the COVID, all the bubonic plague, the swine flu, uh, the monkeypox, the no ox, the AIDS. And you, you notice they never got a second opinion on what, what this uh, quack named uh, Dr. Fauci was talking about. And they keep it in the time for the thing. And they sick it up. And uh, that thing I wrote called what that thing early instant called death early syndrome. Death syndrome. And I asked the question, somebody got a little noise. Somebody got a little noise. You ever kill that noise? Somebody got an echo. Everybody knows you live in line. Somebody got a phone. Somebody got a phone. Somebody got a double line. Double line. Hey, hey, are we good enough? Are we good enough? Okay, uh, good, good, good. Here we are, here we are. Um, those people have set us up at every turn in the road. It's up to you to buy. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Raphael? Peace, brother. What's going on? But they have set us up at every turn in the road, uh, at every juncture. They have, uh, have set us up. But I will tell you this straight up, that don't buy into their statistics. Brother and sister, if you don't have a, a research team or a staff or man, you can go right on this, this, this black power line right here, or right on Clubhouse, and easily find somebody that, that will work and get you some good stats. Don't get the Google and the government stats are no good for us. They're just not truthful. We, we went... Seven times, seven delegations down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm sitting here telling you now, they gave us 300 people. Now, my staff uncovered well over 3,000 people, and they killed in a massacre. So I'm saying that they, they don't hesitate to put us in the body bag. You just have to be just as self-determined to put him in that body bag first. I'm just saying to you, brothers and sisters, don't, don't buy into their, their ideology, philosophy, the Mediterraneanism, their spiritualism, their sexuality, all of that has been programmed to kill us. 
the set of stop number one is Marion Barrett toward me. And then the next move, they come back to take what you have. On the third round, they're coming back to kill you. So stay out of their way. Stay out of their statistics. And much as you can, stay off of their Google. Some of that stuff, you may, uh, the okay. best resource for information might be Google on certain subjects. But when the subject is really concerning us, mm-hmm. I would tend to stay away from the Google and just go to our books. Just go to your scholars. They got their written them, brother. I'm telling you, it's been written and prophesied. The pins have been list, lifted. The pages are sealed. Dr. Chancellor Williams is not a coincidental historian and doctor that teaches about these things. Professor James Small is not a coincidental professor that teaches on these things at the college level. Uh, Dr. Cornell West is not a coincidental scientist, historian, pathologist, uh, 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 geography majors. and These people are brain, brains amongst us as teachers in Ivy League white colleges. They're not a coincidental, but they have taught all of the things that you talked about tonight. That they're, they're, They've written about his books on Dr. Ivan Van Sertema. Not just that they came before Columbus. He got about five, six, seven, maybe ten more books. All of them books will free you. Dr. Naeem Akbar wrote volumes and volumes on this stuff. Dr. Francis Cress Welsing wrote the ISIS papers and another book and another book. And Dr. Neely Fuller teaches you to the compensatory code so you can figure all this stuff out. You don't have to refer to their science. You don't have to use their research. It's to your own mental and spiritual and physical health to stay the hell away from their statistics and away from their, their government uh, government statistics and all of that. It'll make you drunk with white nationalism and that's why most of my half cock trying to figure out the orange toupee guy and, and, and Sleeping Joe and, and burn out Bernie Sanders and all. They're trying to figure something out. Why not use your family? They're not they're just using their own family value system. Why don't you try using your family value system and use your research scientists and your historians and your Malcolm X and your Dr. King? Dr. King was uh, 14 years old, had smoked all of that stuff, had aced all of that stuff from... from uh, uh, research science and political science on into theology and religion and all those major subjects. Aced it all. He was set up for Nobel Peace Prize long before he even joined the movement. He aced the stuff. So I'm saying to you, brother, sister, if you don't use your... And Dr. King told you, first thing Dr. King said, take your money out of their bank, man, and put it in your bank or put it in a, a place where you can manage your own wealth. That's the greatest separation, is taking your wealth out of this crack as well. Get out of Capital One. Get out of uh, Wells Fargo. And they say, get away from net- Netflix. You ain't got to see that movie. Go find an old Dr. Collett tape. You'll be just fine, I'm telling you. You should be sitting home playing you some Dr. Collett uh, YouTube. And he pulls the cover off this cracker and exposes all that stuff. Everything, all the way from Huey P. Newton on to Nat Turner, on to Frederick Douglass, on to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, on to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, on to all those great ones. Mega, Mega Evers was a great They had to stop. Mega Evers was a black revolutionary. And then spots in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. And we, me and Black Lightning have been all of them on the ground. We're not trying to give you something for shooting from the hip. We're giving you from deep in-depth research and visiting with the people on the ground to see what is the condition that has been left from the, uh, the advent of Dr. King. Do a Dr. King mini, mini pilgrimage and go from Atlanta going to Birmingham. Go black from Birmingham to Montgomery. Go from Montgomery up into Selma, Alabama. Hit Selma, Alabama. Dash on over to Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee. And Knoxville, Tennessee. Muffersburg, Jackson, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, where he was slain and assassinated. Just like a major dog. That's right. And the Alphabet Soup Boys did that. The Alphabet Soup Boys hit Fred Hampton. The Alphabet Soup Boys hit Malcolm X. The Mal- Alphabet Soup Boys hit Mega Evers. Or if you can't get straight after that, you ain't got time to study nothing. You get all that shit, you, you ain't got time to study nothing else. <laughs> You got a full plate. You got a full-blown black revolution by the time 
you study those subjects appropriately. Just go on in the library. Sit down in the goddamn library. Don't you realize that they gave William Jefferson Clinton a Rhodes Scholarship? Rhodes Scholar, meaning a master scholar. Huh? The library that William Jefferson Clinton, that Bill Clinton studied in, you can drop it inside of Dr. King's library at, at 9th and G Northwest Washington, D.C. You can drop in Bill Clinton's library. Uh, George W. Bush's wife was a librarian. You can take the library of of Lady Bush and Bill Clinton put together, put it inside of Dr. King's library, still have room for two, three Republican pink elephants and two or three donkeys and still be able to sit in the library in peace and don't even know they're in the place. You just have to know who you are, brother. You got to know what you're looking for and then go and research until you find it. Don't study to sell ourselves approved Study until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high God, the Yahweh Elohim of your understanding, the Jehovah that originated your heaven and your earth for you. Study until God approves, because you might not have enough uh, 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 self-determination to use yourself as a barometer to approve your study. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, I hope it's some wake-up juice somewhere in the house tonight. Put a file. <laughs> you said, pour some water on me. We're going to hide. Heat that mic up tonight, brother and sister. Black power, black power. Black we'll power. Black men, a black military to protect your vested interests and say, my, my, oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my. And we haven't forgot you, brother. Uh, 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 well, hold on. Uh, let me make sure he's still here first. <laughs> Alberto, my brother Alberto's uh, 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 always rocking with us and, and, and making a way uh, out of no way. So that we can um, uh, uh, make sure our displaced people out there will at least have some kind of way to survive. And I was wondering, because we don't have a lot of time, but uh, Brother Alberto, if you'd like to maybe uh, drop a few tidbits that uh, we that we weren't uh, aware of. And I was thinking a HUD usually will back you up on a first time homeowners uh, uh, loan. And uh, these are uh, a hell of a lot more affordable than them um, houses. So uh, I'm wondering if we can do if they can do this if if we can do make that happen through HUD that way or the consortium of the homeless even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know there there's possibilities. I know that right now where another thing they're looking at is what they call accessory dwelling units with ADUs using the containers as ADUs. Um, and basically the easiest that I've seen them working is having like homeowners already have, you know, their, their home and they have plenty of land, you know, uh, or property line. And they actually adding, you know, like accessory dwelling units to their property and renting it out to like, you know, a displaced or homeless veterans, or maybe a, you know, uh, a couple that, that is starting off that pretty much lost oh. everything. So, yeah, the, these are some of the, you know, some and of the let things them know that can what, be Let them know what, you talk, what we're talking about for the people that uh, may be chiming in for the very first time or and they don't sure. really know what we're talking about. <laughs> sure. Basically, we're, 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 we're talking about doing um, off-grid shipping container homes. So, basically, these homes don't need to be connected to no utilities because, um, they make their own electricity. We're using solar panels and wind turbines. Um, we also do use atmosphere water generators to make water out of the air. Since a lot of people don't know that, you know, you can make water from the air. Um, and then you can also use like rainwater collection system as, a, as another backup for water. So you can have plenty of water without having to, you know, um, drill a well in your property or, you know, without having, you know, public... Uh, uh, water coming to the property but another thing too is like uh, the sewage you know um, aspect of it where you can use composting toilets or you can use what i like the best which is the incinerated toilets they, they actually burns human waste and after you know pretty much 30 days of use you pretty much have ster sterile ash that you can pretty much you know throw it into your garden or whatever because basically sterile ash it's you know it's thorough and and it is high in nitrates so it's good for the soil mm -hmm. we'll do like we used to do in the when i was a boy scout bury it 
Yeah. 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 So you can compose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to elaborate on that earlier and I said, no, nah, I'm going to wait till Brother Alberto get in here so he can tell y'all the correct way. <laughs> yeah. 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 Composing is, you know, so there, there's a couple of, 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 you know, when it comes to human waste, there's a couple of different strategies. Um, two that are very popular right now. It's like I said, is the composing toilet. And there's, you know, there's a couple of different types of them. Um, there's one that comes with like, a, you know, with a urine diverter or separator. Um, and you can pretty much do like a homemade French drain. And, you know, you can, you know, never have to worry about empty out a, a urine tank. Um, but the thing about the, um, the feces portion of it, you can pretty much, you know, you can put cocoa fiber core on there you can do peat moss you can even use um animal bedding you know from like uh from the pet store um you can use wood chips um you can use you know pretty much any type of i even seen it where people even use um uh coffee you know grind coffee that they're you know that they you know they made coffee and, you know, what was left over instead of, you know, throwing it away, they just compiled it and used that for composting. So any type of organic material will work. And the good thing about that is, you know, once you start like a little, you know, composting after a certain time, it just turns into soil. So, you know, it's a good way of, you know, on, on mm -hmm. how to keep everything preserved as nature preserved it. You and know, without proof. any... So I'm, I'm going to ask that too, and they, these should be like a like a bomb shelter, I would think, almost oh, like stormproof. Yeah, and that's how we, you know, I first started doing them. I mean, we were doing them, you know, we we still do them in the military. You know, we use them for, we use these for barracks, you know, to house our troops. You know, we use them as you know offices. We use them as workshop. You know, we we put these on C-130s, and you know, and we ship these overseas. Um, so yeah, it makes a great bomb shelter. You know, this stuff will, you know, will stop regular, you know, handgun bullets from coming through. Um, if you look at it right now, it's like, these are, you know, you can have tornadoes, you can have hurricanes, you can have a hell storm and, you know, the, these stuff are rock solid. They ain't going nowhere, you know? So even an earthquake, you know, if you, you know, if you fall into an earthquake or a sinkhole, Guess what? The whole unit falls down and at least you'll be able to get pulled out. But you can't even do that with regular construction. And that's the thing when you look at it right now, where the way they're actually constructing buildings these days, they're using those um, SIP panels, which is just, you know, compressed wood boards with, you know, with some, you know, um, pressed sandwich foam. And, and you know, and they're building, you know, three, four and five story buildings with these stuff. You know, you, you get a little piece of lightning and you, you live it in a matchbox. You know, but again, you know, poor construction. And then they wonder, where, you know, oh, my God, you know, so many people got displaced or so many people got hurt. You know, a tornado came and it got completely ruined down to the ground with these containers. Guess what? You know what I'm saying? Think about it. When these containers where they are shipped overseas, you know, back and forward, they stack these seven high, you know, on a boat. On a boat, they're rock. Sometimes you got swells out in the ocean. They're like, you know, 20 to 30 feet high. And these still, you know, in these containers, they stay put in that salty water, you know. And, and they make it back across the pond like nothing, you know. So they, they, they're very durable, you know what I'm saying. And I just think that we should be, you know, um, when, it's, when it comes to affordability, you know, this is just a good product to build at an affordable price and, and you know and we have a lot of homelessness and we use a lot of our government funding you know what i'm saying to fund wars and and you know and and give away our money to other countries you know when you know we can utilize some of that money and you know help out our veterans here or our homeless population you know feed our kids you know shelter our kids you know i just think they just it just a lot of things going to, you know, a lot of pork spending, you know, and nothing is really spent the right way, which is a shame. But it is what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. What is the average cost of that? Sure. So, you know, um, we're, we're trying right now to make these simplified where we have 
a 20 foot standard shipping container they, they it could be used as a studio apartment so basically you know it's just like a regular studio but you still have a kitchenette area where you got you know uh, a two burner cooktop you know you you have your little mini fridge you know you got a microwave um and then you also have you know a full bathroom you got shower sink and toilet you know so that's a studio apartment the studio apartment we have different categories uh, we have a basic system uh, container, uh, which that one is pretty much like the cheapest of the cheapest, but it doesn't have any type of solar or nothing like that. You know, it's just like, you know, you want to put it on your property and, and you want to, you know, put some plumbing into it or you want to do, you know, um, put some uh, uh, run an electrical outlet out there. You know what I'm saying? So those are, re are ranging around 20 grand. But the cream of the crop is the off grid ones that we actually offer. So basically, on a twenty footer, you're basically looking around anywhere from forty grand price range. Um, and of course, there's some upgradable stuff as far as toilets and stuff is concerned. But it's you know you're looking about forty for the for the twenty foot standard, and then for the forty foot, which is actually an actual one bedroom, you know, and a bathroom and you know, and a kitchen and everything. That one is pretty much you know running. I say around, you know, basic price, 59000 and then it goes up all the way to our off-grid model, which is, you know, it, somewhere from $74,000 plus upgrade because some people want, like, you know, they, they want to, you know, almost like pimp my ride. They want to put an upstairs balcony, you know what I'm saying? I even have a customer want to put a jacuzzi up that, up that joker, you know? So, you know, so it's very modular, and you can pretty much – add whatever you want to but when you talking about basic pricing i said you know on a on a 20 you're looking about 40k and on a 40 you're looking about you know seventy four thousand dollars on on average you know but consider this to if you go to like a camping where one of those rv manufacturers mm -hmm. and stuff like that you get one of those cheap park rides that you just park and go and you know that you tow those fifth wheels and they costing you, you know, eighty to a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I've seen them. Sure you enough. know, and, and if a tornado comes, guess what? You know, there goes your investment, and you mm -hmm. owe the bank. You know, you know, which is very poor quality, and they they they're not rock solid. You know, what if you got you put them, you go somewhere, and somebody come and do a, a drive by shooting, those bullets just going to be coming right across because again, insulation and everything is paper thin. You know, it's, it's yeah. like thin aluminum. You know, so I can vouch look, for that because I was looking at them. I was actually looking at them. They they look good on the inside, but I tell you what, a rhino would knock it over. But if a rhino ran into this yep. container, oh, yeah. what what would happen? <laughs> You'll pass out. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's basically it's cotton it's cotton steel. You know what I'm saying? And the good thing about cotton steel is that the patina. You know what I'm saying? Even when it rust is when it it gets rusty. The patina from the rust actually even give it another extra of protection, you know. So, you, I mean, you could come across to a container that's been, you know, pretty much a hundred years, you know, and, and, and it's still there, you know. So think about it if you if you well maintain it, you know, where like, hey, you know, um, every let's say every five five years whatever you want to you know throw another coat of paint you know what i'm saying give it a little more you know protection you know if you will maintain it man the, 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 they'll laugh you know centuries you know if they are well maintained and the other thing too cool about it is that a lot of people don't know and i don't know if i have shared with you guys before that basically was even going you know in space and what's going on with climate change and everything like that for example when we get solar flares from the sun, guess what? A shipping container, when you put it on, on earth, on the ground, if it's almost like a Faraday cage. So when we start building these containers on, we have our cell phones inside, they don't even work until we start cutting doors opening. You know what I'm saying? Then we get signals, in, a little bit of signal inside the containers. So again, it's a perfect Faraday cage. You want to make it into a you know, rock solid Faraday cage, we can actually ground you know use those um eight foot grinding copper copper uh, rods into earth and then we tie it onto the container and guess what you know you can have a, a electromagnetic impulse you can have solar flares and you know and all your electronics be go you know be all good you know you're still operational 
Yes, yeah. I, I know for a fact because I, I we, we I've, I've seen those uh those those ground rods pop, pro, you know, pounded into the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, I've even actually. I've took it. I've took a screwdriver and wrapped the metal around it and made a ground. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it's a perfect ferdy cage. You know, it's just so much protection. You know, it's it's like if you really think about it, you know, like how can you build something affordable and house people and at a low cost? Because that's another key factor that a lot of cities and municipalities and counties they looking at well. If we do tiny homes, you know, you got to look at the cost of the tiny homes. And on top of that, you still got to think about, okay, we got to provide these people water. We got to provide these people electricity. We got to provide these people some type of sewage, you know, solution. Next thing you know, they'll be like, oh, never mind. We're not going to do that because it costs too much money. But with these containers that we're actually building, guess what? You don't got to worry about no power because the power is already included. It makes it generates its own power. You know, and if you talk about, you know, uh, water, the unit makes its own water. Think about it this way. The island, you know, in Puerto Rico, when, you know, when the hurricane came through Puerto Rico, you know, so much rain. And next thing you know, there's no water. People like, you know, they have no drinking water. And so much humidity over in the island. You, and you know how much water is like. I'm able to, I could make you a hundred gallons of water in a day with, with no problem, you know, because it's water in the air, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's easy to, you know, to purify it. You can use, you know, a Berkeley system. You can even use one of those um, zero waters from Target and Walmart that you can get, you know, um, and, 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 and make your own, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, even rainwater, you know, you, you know, back in the days, you know, they used to, do rainwater collection, you know what I'm saying? And rainwater is still pretty good. You know, you get, you filter it, and good to go. But yeah, you just, you know, but the man now tells you oh, it's not safe. You know, right now in the state of Florida, um, capturing rainwater is illegal, which I'm still like, you know, sure. tell me why is illegal. Oh, because, you know, it does not replenish the aquifer. We want that rainwater to, to hit the soil so it can replenish the aquifer. But I'm like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's kind of stupid. the money of it. That's all. Yeah, yeah, it's stupid. You know, you know, the pioneers and the people, you know, that, that you know, were here in the 1800s, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's how they live off. They lived out of rainwater, you know? So it's like, you know, it's not going to do anything to the aquifer. You know, we get plenty of rain, you know? There's plenty of humidity, you know? So it's like, you know, but again, it, it just... It's just a little game that the government plays yeah. you know, to keep people in check and not do this because they know that in a state where you can produce electricity because you get plenty of sun, mm -hmm. you get plenty of water, you know, and, and they don't like things like that because at the end of the day, it's all about getting that permit fee, you know, so the county can make money because mm -hmm. they want you to be connected. The utility company, you know what I'm saying, you know, they, they want you to be connected, you know. Um, because it's just a way of, of, you know, of pretty much raping you, you know, and when I look at it. They're out here buying, uh, they out here buying, uh, what you call it, those, uh, 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 like Mercedes trucks that cost 75000 And, uh, we got to be careful what we say on here because, uh, uh, YouTube, I don't know why they don't even like the, the, they, the, the you know, vaping instead of, uh, CA, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. But we do yeah. have a few more minutes, so I was wondering if anybody had any closing comments because I know time's mm -hmm. getting short. <laughs> Major one already, uh, he already ducked out. So um, uh, I know, Brother Pete, uh, you had some uh, really good things going on last night. So I like maybe like to leave it with the people so that they they won't get lost, you know. Uh, and. Uh, Shaky mama, I call mama, I just fall out over here. Uh huh. Black power. And uh, the only only thing that I would say to to help in this, our our movements is we need to make sure that Donald Trump does not get in the White House again. Okay. Um, regardless of what your ideologies are, regardless of what your thoughts on the matter is, you know. Yeah, the man is the man is really dangerous. So, 
I, well, that should be our immediate agenda right now is to make sure he doesn't get in there. He's running against great, great granddaddy. What can I say? <laughs> I mean, somebody's great, great granddaddy, Biden. And Biden's standing there shitting on himself on the stage. <laughs> you know? Uh, I don't know. Anybody here see the debate? Yeah. Okay, you saw it. You can explain to them. Here it is. The orange toupee guy says that the immigrants are threatening and taking black jobs. Now, I got to figure out what a black job is. And he says that the veterans, uh, that the the Ukraine and Israelis and the Russians are taking um, what the veterans would get, to, displacing the veterans so they can give the housing to the to 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 the whites and the veterans and the I mean to the whites and and the Ukrainians, etc. Now here's a no good bastard, a hypocrite that ain't had nobody black. Period. He said he would drain the fucking swamp. Excuse the expression. I'm going a little bit farther, <laughs> but he would drain the swamp. But he drained the swamp and got all the reptilians, all the snakes he could find, all the lizards that were left over lizards. And put them right on his administration. You look at all the snakes he put in power. He put it on his cabinet. cabinet especially the Minister of Defense. Uh, and the person of Jeff Sessions. Do you know that Coretta Scott King, the wife of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., used all of her last dying days and breath? She's a friend of mine. And uh, to stop Jeff Sessions... And, and to put a backhand in the, in, in the face of the black people in the black nation, he appointed the hardest core redneck in the country as his justice. And said that the immigrants are stealing and blocking black jobs. You, you heard that statement, didn't you, brother? If you, you watched the debate? Yeah. You heard that's that what statement? They, that's what he's saying. That's the biggest yeah, but that's hypocrite that's ever been that's in the And they got all that's the Negroes running around with their nose spread. Wide open for this crack. Man, yep. I was, man, they could walk with me for a week and walk off and got damn Kool-Aid they've been drinking. I really do. I'm not going to lie to you. I ain't for old Biden. I'm for us getting our own politics, man. Walk away from this bastard. You got yeah. more on the political ball than they, they have. Mm -hmm. Just don't realize. Steady at Keeberland. Steady at Dapper. And you see you're bigger than them. You're better than them. Why are you better? Because you're righteous. You are more righteous than they are. Mm -hmm. They intend on wickedness. They will lie and steal. huh? And then when they lie mm -hmm. and steal, in order to cover it up, they will kill to cover it up, brother. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just here to say my, my, my. Yeah. Black power. Black power. That's what I was just sitting there thinking. We ain't got nobody good on either side to vote for. So I'm thinking we need to uh, do like um, do like um, Adam Clayton Powell and Martin Luther King and them used to go up in the president's office and demand what our people want and need, regardless of who was in there. It's like whoever's going to be in there, you're going to do what we asked you to do, or we're going to make sure you get out of there. So it's like, oh, man, it's, I don't see no good, uh, uh, no good candidate at all. None. And none, neither one of them is going to be trying to give us reparations. One is good. One trying to code word black folks. Uh, and other one's trying to, man, we already know what Trump about. It's like, yo, that's. So why, don't we, so why don't we create our own political party and train our own people to go in from the inside, when I'm, from the inside out and yeah. do what needs to be done for our people? I mean, they do it for themselves. Why don't we do the same thing for ourselves? Yeah, I agree. Well, there's a young man coming to the summit tomorrow who is definitely in that in that field, and uh, he's with us. So that might be one right there that we can bring to the forefront. Mm -hmm. We gotta have our own, and then even if even it don't matter who's in the White House, the Congress run it. So how many delegates do we need? You know, how many delegates do we need to actually run it? 
regardless who's in there. You know, if he say something we don't like, we shut him down. Okay, but see, I'm not talking about replacing just the top with our own. I'm talking about replacing every single solitary office that's available with our own. I'm talking Congress, talking judges, talking state, local, county. I mean, when do we wake up and realize that, you know, we can do, we can talk all year, okay? But are we training ours to become what we need? Are we training our youngsters to become judges? Are we training our youth to become council members, lawyers? Are we training our youth to become congressmen? You know, I mean, we that that was one of the things that Bobby Rush tried to do, okay? Who's a panther? And he was in Congress, and that's what he talked about, but nobody listened. We still talking about pumping the fists and marching up and down the street. Okay, yeah, show our protests. It's good to protest, but what do you do about your protesting? What happens after you don't protest? Go back home and watch Oprah? I mean, that's just real talk. We got youth out here that can be trained. When do we train them? Now. Like I said last night, like I said last night, we need an agenda. We don't have an agenda. We don't have a constitution. We don't have a code of conduct. When do we deal with the basics and then we can deal with everything else? Yes, sir. When do we develop our own Congress? We need their Congress. But we that we're not dumb. We're not stupid. We're the inventors of everything that they have. So why don't we put our brilliance to work? My wife said something when she heard that Donald Trump got immunity. You know what she said? She said, that's the end of America. He gave immunity to the police, too. I mean, he said he's going to. Oh, this man can literally, now he can literally order the United States Army to come into your protest, to come into your protest and shoot you down. Y'all need to find out what the what the immunity is, it, it, an official act as president. So if he orders the army to come in and shoot you down, that's an official act. He has immunity. He cannot be charged for the criminality of it. This is serious. My wife is from Saudi Arabia. She said that you do not want a king in place. And that's what they just did to Donald Trump. She knows what a king is. She knows what a complete, absolute immunity is. I don't know whether y'all know it, but if the king of Saudi Arabia walked down the street and point at you, you might as well... You might as well cut your own throat because you that, that's a death sentence. Your head coming off. True. You trust that. And what happens to him? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. And then what they did to Khashoggi? Hmm. So like my mentor used to say, <clears throat> the playground is now closed. 
Right on. So y'all heard it here. That's for sure. Because they ain't gonna tell you. That's for sure. They ain't gonna tell you nothing. And the right um uh, uh national chairman. <laughs> I'm sure you wanna uh well. Yes, sir. Man, yeah. I, I'm so thankful that, that you all came out to the to Black Power Radio tonight. And, and it's always uh, stimulating to me to, to talk about black revolution and to talk about uh, doing things for we the people. Because, I mean, we're not doing anything any wise differently than anybody else that's in the, in the, the business of, of aiding and assisting their people. And you see the Chinese are doing for themselves. And you see the rednecks doing it for themselves. And the Zionists are over. They are shown up doing it for themselves these days. We just have to get up and, and be over in our operations. And in talking about our political prisoners, uh, such as the um, Mumia Abu-Jamal, the, the Imam Jamil Abdullah Alameen, uh, H-Rap Brown, and Mutullah Shakur, those guys that passed away by our social political prisoners, they will soak all the blood, soak all the usage value out of our our uh, social political heroes, they're just uh, uh, been indefinitely de detained and and uh, they're in captivity, brothers. They're not. It's not a normal. They know these ministers are, are innocent and we're only out there trying to help the people. Mumia Abu Bujama, he just wanted to open a co-op on the block. <laughs> you understand? And John Africa, and these, these people stayed in prison in the penitentiary for 40 years. We've interviewed them right here on Black Power Radio. The people were just released. The women stayed there 40 years. They just wanted to open a co-op. They wanted to join on to Africa, what we, we are now traditionally, we're calling al Kibu land. Why in the hell are we going to class and say we sat up under Yosef Ben Yakana, sitting up under John Hendrick Clark, Sitting up under Dr. Ivan Ben Sertima and those names we just named. Yeah, it was what I just said right there. Why are we sitting under them and keep getting knowledge and keep getting scholarship if we're not going to use the scholarship? Not going to use the knowledge. You might as well stay in kindergarten somewhere, stay in, in White is on the Moon somewhere. You yeah. might as well have stayed in bed and not get out. You damn skip if you're not going to use the scholarship to skillfully and effectively fight your revolution against the tyranny and the World War III that's on our black ass at the side, on our black behind. I'm just trying to say, brother and sister, you have to work smart. You have to use the wisdom. Don't keep talking about the wisdom. Use the wisdom against them. Use your tools of knowledge against them. Your tools are just as refined as their tools. Your AI and IT is just as good as their AI. And your metaverse is good as their uh, metaverse. Our universe is universal. If white and them got it, they got it from us. And it's a matter of a week or two, we'll have something to supersede it. Give us the reparations. Take our reparations, whatever it takes to get it. But have self-determination for, for reparations. And you'll see we'll level the playing field. If you've got a million people, a million black people are locked up. Okay? Well, there's 1.75 honor graduates every year. Why are we not? But Brother Pete and I have been right down there on Kyle, excuse me, I'm sorry, on Howard University talking to all them undergrads. Is that right, Brother Pete? Sit there and talk to them all night long. Is that right, Pete? Not only not only sat there and talk with them all night long, but we stayed with them for three months when they mm. protested against mm. the university itself. The university mm. decided that, to, that they was going to punish them by pulling back security. But I'm going to show you how smart our youth are. When they pulled back the security guards, which then these kids paid tuition for to be secure in that education and to be safe on that campus. When they pulled them security guards back, our youth was smart enough to call us. Panthers That's party. right. That's right. And I called as many of Panthers as I possibly could. And we went up in there and we secured that campus and we made sure that them students were secure and safe. That's right. And fed them when when we feed them, brother Pete, every day, they breakfast, they lunch, and dinner. They every had day, had food to fill up the three, whole dorm. Three, they three did not go hungry. Hot food every day up there. 
They didn't know what to make. Didn't see not one parent. Where was the, the alumni uh, when you call off the name like Deborah Allen, the best dance step in the world? Felicia Rashad, the wife of the vice president of the United States, Camila Hart. All of them want to claim Coward and Howard University. But when they had mold and mildew in their dormitories, you couldn't find these bastards. Brother Pete and I were there for three months and, and, and barely saw how many black parents showed up. Maybe one. And in maybe the cold, two. it was cold. It was cold. I don't know. Ain't seen no it parents. Was, it was freezing. Don't you know if that type of thing had happened on Georgetown University, on Maryland University, on American University? Or in the own Catholic, own Catholic university, do you know how many cracker parents would have been up there making sure that they had sleeping bags and tents? Oh no, Black Panther Party was we provided, we provided, we provided them with some sleeping, sleeping bags, bags and right? blankets. Woo! That's a phenomenal. Sleeping bags, blankets. We even provided them with some tents. Oh yes, we did. And food every day, water. Plenty. They had so much water, they start giving out water. They start giving away water. Make sure they had plenty of water. And plenty of food, not no little bit of food. And the people driving, driving up, just leaving off big bundles of food, all type, big old buckets and yards of, of fried chicken and food and, and hot dinners and good soup every day and stuff. They stayed healthy while they had their, uh, what well, really is a boycott, a protest, a strike. It's all of that. I want y'all to know something, brothers. And a lot of people say, Martin never got you nothing. But there ain't a damn bit of difference in a march, a protest, or a rally. All of them say you pissed about something. And you came out in the street to demonstrate about it. I don't give a damn if you call it a march, you call it a rally, a protest. You just got to wake up, brother and sister, and see the reality of our circumstances. And goddamn it, get to doing something about that. You shouldn't be able to rest at night knowing that you didn't put a plug in for the revolution today. Oh, my, my, my. It's, there's a lot been done to us, brother and sister. But these are temporary and, and, conditions. And, and, They're only and permanent the conditions that, if you make it a permanent condition. Go ahead, sir. And one of the things that we definitely have to wake up to is the fact that sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do in order to achieve the things that you need to achieve. We can't pick and choose anymore. We have no choice. Choice has been not. I, <laughs> no, we don't have a choice. Right. And, and brother, people's doing this under duress and and, uh, and and managing his health circumstances while shepherd uh, aiding the to heap, but the greatest help. And we challenged them to, to, to bring term papers and to do research and, and to bring updates and, and recruit up some people there on campus and, and organize yourself against this tyranny. The war on us is bigger than World War III to me. They've never let up on us, sister. From the 16 whatever year they want to claim to this hour, they've never stopped a war on us. You execute us and say no due process. We can stop that. Whenever we make self determination, whenever we decide we're ready to go, we can put a stop to that. End the tyranny, end the war on us. And then you can maybe in a six months, a year later, you can talk about some World War Three shit. But until they stop the war on us, we just like Muhammad Ali. No, I ain't fighting in your war. No, I ain't exhibition. I ain't doing nothing with you, cracker. Excuse the expression. <laughs> I slip sometimes. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh but we're not doing nothing with you up and until you change that dynamic of stopping the war on us, then maybe we can consider doing something around here. But until that time, we're at war against the beast. Because the, the beast is warring on us, on we the people, in education, in the, in the job market, in the housing market, every turn in the road, every field of endeavor, every avenue of human interest, why they got some special, 
They said if we had, and, and Brother Pete was right there again. See, he ain't missing the beat. See, y'all, some of y'all missing. Brother Pete wasn't missing. The COVID, they said that we reached a record time. We carried the 50,000 body bags in record time all over the world to target us. You know this is a beast here we're dealing with. 50,000 body bags. So that means that we have been the targets of the exploits all the time. The targets of the COVID, the targets, targets of pneumonia, flu, AIDS, swine flu, blue bonnet plague, and everything else they came with bacterial warfare against us. The smallpox and the blankets they did to our, our parents right on the soil. The smallpox and the blankets. According to the historian, mm -hmm. they killed millions of people here. Let me, let me, let me share to something. Erase the Akibo landing in are the, are the African presence on this soil. Yes, sir, Black Power. Let me share something with everybody. This country is divided into 10 different sections. In each one of those sections, there are 10 concentration camps that are fully supplied fully loaded, fully operational, with no prisoners. In each concentration camp, there are 10,000 coffins. Well, you think those coffins were full? When they start saying, hurt them in, hurt them in. Definitely for us. Put us in, in the in the grave in the graveyard. I will um uh, I will uh black uh, I will black brother Pete up on that because uh he had me studying up on that and I'm like man they got a place in Anchorage Alaska that's supposed to be able to hold two hundred and what was it two man it's been a little while two hundred and fifty I mean it sound like it could hold the entire black population right there in Anchorage Alaska. Sitting there ready, waiting. <laughs> no, so right down the street, I look at the um, uh, what, what do you call that? The uh, uh, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. I was like, they when I, when I when I when I first looked over there, it, it was a certain, it was it was you know it was it, you know it was big, but now it's like it's expanded, expanded it, as far as I can see, buildings. I was like, what do they have all the way in the back? Because look at this. They got double rows of bob uh, razor wire fence. And, um, and and all you got to do is, uh, 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 like I did, I actually was testing the waters. I went over there and sat down just and, and was eating a sandwich. I wanted to see how long, how fast they was going to come out there. Oh, yeah, they was out there in the blink of an eye. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I said, I said, what you up to? I said, oh, just sitting there having a sandwich. You know, I wanted to see how fast they were going to come out there. Shoot, 30 seconds, you know. So uh, if, if, if they think that that's just U.S. Border Patrol, no, think again. And, and they come out with those green uniforms on, uh, look like, look like uh, soldiers, like soldiers. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. We're, we're far away from the border. It, there ain't no border around here. So the border is the, the eagle legals that they let in to replace us, you know. And one guy, uh, uh, I mean, they showed it. The, the, they showed it, um, uh, the, this old Texan or something. He was, uh, he was, they, 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 people, I mean, they were just coming across his line, his land, but they weren't coming across with men, you know, women and children and families and, looking like people escaping. Those were soldiers. I know soldiers when I see them. Those were soldiers. They were they were lined up. They was in a formation coming across there, you know? So I'm just saying we're going to have to be ready because what they're saying is live. You know? During the COVID and during the George uh, Floyd situation, don't you know they use the National Guard, especially when they, especially in Washington D.C. and many boxed-in neighborhoods, they had the National Guard out, ready to do for. They weren't the regular National Guard to deal with domestic. They were geared up like they were going to Desert Storm, looking 
national guard. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they did. Surrounded many black neighborhoods across America with that. Brother and sister, we have to realize there's a war on us. They are tuned in to go after the Akibolanian people, the, the people that came off the continent off of our motherland and the people that are here. The white man is on you as a target, the first to die. Early instant death syndrome and the government and Hollywood have put out billions of dollars for the zombie. What, what will happen in an urban area for zombie? The zombie, but that's what that COVID is designed to do, to have you walk in the zombie. You know, it's, it's a play act on television, but in reality, they were trying to corral as many of us, and they had a plan. They were going to do some things to us, and it kind of backfired when we started waking up on, on what that COVID really was and stayed away from it. The majority of black people started getting away from it. So the plan back, but we were the intended target on that goddamn COVID. You can believe it or not. That's the truth. My, my, my. Oh, yeah. And matter of fact, um, when the people when uh, when when the, when the people started getting uh, arrested in the protests and stuff, uh, they were well, the ones that were behind that, they said they were forced to take uh, uh, shots when they got there. They were forced to take them, you know? So I'm like, yeah. I was like, nah. And they were saying, you can't get no phone call. You can't get nothing unless you take that shot. I was like, we ain't taking a shot because we already know where our people at. We know who's back there. So you will, we don't need no call. <laughs> well, our people are right here waiting. They don't need no calls. <laughs> they, 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 they took away our rights uh, to make sure that they uh, injected us with that poison or injected us with that, uh, I, I would think, uh, a microchip for real, you know, for the right ones. <laughs> the right ones get a microchip, <laughs> you know. At least that's my idea anyway. So I'll land my plane on that, Black Power. And, and that idea is not foreign to what they're doing to us, to have some control mechanism. And, and the, the greatest nightmare of the opposition is to lose the psychological control, to, lead, to lose control of these 50 million of us that are here. And the 50 million of us that are organized strongly against the opposition. You in a lose, lose, lose trying to team up with this bastard. Look how they've done. Everyone in the team, look how Colin Powell was done. The greatest war hero of all times, most decorated of all time generals, Secretary of State, the highest ranking man that was among, and he came out of what you call the GOP of the Republican Party. Donald Duck Trump, Ronald Reagan, to name a few. They impeached Nixon. Hmm? Nixon said, don't worry. You see what I say? And they vilified him and made him a liar and they moved in and killed him. Just like that. Just, just like I just said. Moved in and killed him. Hit him with a triple dose and they wanted to get all of us like that. If we can get Colin Powell to go down and take a few doses of that. Yeah. The, the vaccine, the, the stab and the jab. I see New World Warrior popped in. Uh, we we, we, we close to the end, but uh, hey, 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 you know, never late. You here Black right Powell, on time, Black. all the time. Black Power, so good to see you. Good to be around to be seen. I don't know who blessed me with this link, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Black power, black power, black power. Black power. Black power to you, sir. New world warrior. Uh, was, uh, 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 I mean, hey, we hadn't heard yes, from you before. Yes, but, uh, even though we near the end, we not at the end. So black power. Man, things been crazy as hell. Thank you. Like what y'all was saying, the devil is busy as hell, man. Trying to stop soldiers from getting together to do what we got to do. He can't stop this. We're going to take it all back, make it all black anyhow. In spite of that devil trying to do everything he can, he ain't got enough power to stop this shit. Dream on, devil. Dream on. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yes, sir. So we got, um, I, I'm thinking, um, um, it, it dawned on me while, while we was doing it. I was like, you know what? We need to just go ahead and stick to our guns. We usually eight. We usually start at eight on Sunday and Monday. And Monday, we need to do just that. Do just that. Do just that. Sunday and Monday. Eight o'clock. Yep. Yep. I mean, because they cut out when they cut out anyway. Hey, we cut out when we cut out, right? Black power. That's it. We're going to all be here in D.C. tomorrow evening at 6. We're going to have a leadership roundtable and a little small reception and bring all these revolutionaries together for for a powwow session. Brothers and sisters will be out here at the place called the E-Life uh, tomorrow evening to talk about some of these things and hope that, that revolution will, will, will grow. Yeah, revolution, uh, black revolution is, is, a, is a lifestyle. That's right. We're going to grow forward together. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. It's because you know, uh, I like the way uh, I like the way Azrael said it. Don't worry about the panthers you see. Worry about the ones you don't see. Hmm. Well, this has been a really good episode. Second episode. It actually might be the first episode. <laughs> I'm thinking this is the first episode of Black Power Radio TV, or what we call it, ooh we, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad TV. <laughs> yeah, give it back to the people. That's where that's where it belongs. We can't we can't hide this uh, uh, so where the people can't find us. I'm like, man, I'm like, I only know one number by heart and we can't use it no more. So that's all good. We got this now, you know? Yep. I'm talking about Black Power. I'm talking about the old blog talk number. I know that by heart. <laughs> oh, I do know one more by heart, but it's on the bottom of the screen. So that's why we haven't really been saying it a lot. But for those that are not looking at the bottom of the screen, uh, focus on that green line that's going across. It says dollar sign 77 bakers so that we can uh, keep the black revolution on track, you know, um, because, I mean, we got to get there. It's not is it, you can tell the phonies from the real grassroots. There's real grassroots. We're spending our own dime to get there. Isn't that right, y'all? I mean, shoot, uh, man. I mean, our gas, I, it's not like we, uh, if we had it, uh, we don't mind and we do it. Matter of fact, I had it at one point and I thought to myself, oh, well, I got it. I'll just do it. Man, I'm telling you now, you do it, you do it, you do it, you keep doing it. You ain't got it no more. I ain't got it no more. You can't get what I ain't got. You know what I mean? So, you know, <laughs> but I tell you what, uh, we'll spend our... Not we will we I, we already did we spent our last dimes <laughs> uh, shoot we we'll, we'll go to Mississippi to fight for Rashim Carter and and what happens then all of a sudden uh, uh, things happen that's why y'all got to put some money on that dollar sign seven seven B A K E R S capital letter like patty cake bakers man put it on that man fast as you can. <laughs> but anyway, I'm saying because um, if we had a rented a van, I don't think we would, well, it would have happened anyway. Divine intervention always got our back, you know, but uh, believe me, to get back and you say, well, I don't have very much money to go in the first place, but I'm going to spend a little bit I got to go. And now I got to get somebody to send me another $400 because now we got to jump on buses. And now we got to jump on trains. And now I got to get an Uber when I get there. Good Lord. It's like they ain't even no, they ain't even no bus. They ain't no bus stations where I live at. I'm not in the easy spot. It ain't no public transportation. It's like, yo, up here, you either got a car, walk, or ride your bike. <laughs> and, that, and everybody know what I'm doing. <laughs> so. I'm just saying we we got to get this back on track and, and, and put on their hashtag uh, that Black Panther bus for us, you know, so we know where the money going. 
where we need to put it at. We're going to do that anyway, because that's like, yo, we, we got a regiment to get to uh, to the people. You know, what do you want us to do? Uh, go stand there and, and look across the line at, at an army that's standing there with, with buses and they, they got buses. And here we are. Uh, we can barely make it in our cars. We got four, five deep. But believe me, they don't want to see us get out. Because when we get out, we tired and cranky. Well, that's just me. That's just me. I ain't going to say everybody's tired and cranky. Because uh, Shaky Mom Akbar, he, he, keep it, he, keep us, he keep us motivated. He keep us uh, motivated and, 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 and ready to go, you know. Me, I'm like, man, I'm cranky, been on the road all day. So you want to start a war? Here I am. And it's like, no, like, no, don't, don't don't be the first one to fire shots in this revolution. <laughs> Cause it ain't time yet. Even even the uh, the Almighty told me that uh in the spirit a long time ago. Don't fire no shots until I tell you to. I was like, man, I'm ready to fire shots now and jumped over a wall, uh, practice, uh, you know, uh, uh, practicing uh, uh, maneuvers, right? Jumped over a wall and hurt my foot. And that's when I looked up and said, okay, I see. I was, like, I was about ready to just spark it off. And, and God was telling me, it's not time. See, because right now, you don't know shape. That was before I met uh, uh, these revolutionaries on the line right here, you know, that could tell me how to do it right, you know, and when to do it and, and say, what do you want to do? You want to go get, uh, and like Brother Pete said, you, you want to go ahead and uh, start, uh, like you told me, I'll never forget that, Brother Pete. You say, hey, uh, if you pop off at the police when you leave, what about the uh, the people that's still there? Do you think maybe the police might give them an extra hard time? Because of you, and I'm like, yeah, man, they might say they, they might not want to mess with me because they're like, yo, we're gonna have to get five of us to deal with him, and it might not be worth our while. <laughs> so let him go, and as soon as he go, we're gonna come on the people. So I don't do that no more. Uh uh, I don't do that no more. So that's what I'm saying. We gotta put some money on the dollar sign 77 bakers while we getting seasoned out here, you know, and while and while we're teaching our, our youth. Uh, like uh, 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 I ain't gonna say no names. We we got a lot of top soldiers and, and and a lot of top youth that's gonna hold the line when for another fifty years. That's why I say, well, you know what? Gotta make sure Black Power Radio don't go nowhere. It was here. It was here. Uh, uh, it was here when I was a little kid. I'm going to put it like that. Black Power Radio was here when I was a little kid out there uh, 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 getting suspended for fighting uh, at, at, at school. You know, Black Power Radio was on. I didn't even know. So now that I know, I want to make sure we leave it in the youth's hands for another 50 years. And then they'll leave it in their youth's hands for another 50 years. So when they tell us, oh, it's raining outside. Y'all ain't got to go outside and say, in other words, uh, uh, we doing better now because they took the knife that was 12 inches in our back, six inches out. It's not even began to heal the wound yet, like Malcolm X said. So black power, I'm glad to be in this circle. I will really am. I'm telling you now. Hey, I'm putting it like this. Tell my band uh, when we were sewing down, and I got some music to end this with too, that... Um, I like well, y'all in it, y'all in it to get paid, and I'm in it uh, to get uh, to, to to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy, you know, like Harriet Tubman line, Harriet Tubman line, Runaway Slave Express, Black flags flying, saying Nation in distress, take another step, Black. And I know, I know, Big uh, Warrior, he can relate to that because he's another great musician. But I'm saying, I was trying to leave a legacy of the music. To leave the message. And I'm like, yo, I ain't got to make it rhyme. Just give me a megaphone. Let me just tell them. You know, I was like, wait a minute. That's what I really wanted to do in the first place. So I hung the microphone up and took the megaphone up and said, let's do this. You know, hey, we was already singing in front of crowds of people. And he, so it's like, ain't no stage fright up in here. You know, so it's like, uh, and not only that, ain't no fear up in here. You know, and you ain't gonna lead the people right. with fear. Ain't gonna lead the people with no damn fear. You know, they can see that. You smell fear. Hell, you know, uh, even the dog can smell fear. 
I, wa- I used to walk up to the fence of the German Shepherd. The German Shepherd go get in his house. <laughs> I jumped over the fence one time to get my football. I was like, man, there's two big German Shepherds over there. I was like, man, I'm going to get my ball. <laughs> I said, them the same German Shepherds that look me in my eyes every day and go get in their house. You know? But I'm just saying the ignorance is bliss because they could have ate my ass up. So, but I'm just saying that was uh, make you who you are, you know? So if you do that when you was a little kid, guess what you're going to do now? Mm. Now I open the fence and take that dog and say, you come in with me, you know? Say, because we got a battle to go do. And after the battle, I'll put you back in your yard. I'm not stealing you. I'm just borrowing you for a little while. So anyway, I just had to get that out because you hit a you hit a spark. I don't know who hit the, who hit the spark, but you damn sure hit the spark. Uh, so it's like, yo, another 50 years of Black Power Radio, y'all. So give it, get up off them dimes. Get up off them, um, a, a, what's it, a penny or a 20? <laughs> a, a, a dub and above. So Black Power, and we're going to keep it going. Black Power. Let me Black know when power. The- let me know when to drop that music. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. I, I ain't gonna step to on go nobody's go. toes. I know somebody got uh, something that they uh, well, uh, that they didn't say. But now, like you always say, uh, uh, now the chairman, if you didn't get it out, now's your time. I have to get ready to go. So all I want to do is just leave this same saying: never tell a child no and feed somebody. Yes, my brother. Absolutely. All power to the people. Power to the people. All power to the people. All power to the people. It might be be too hot to hold, brother. You know, everybody, be out in um, Capitol Heights tomorrow at the E-Life. E-Life is at uh, 9033 on uh, Central Avenue and Capital Heights, Maryland. Some call it Lago, but we'll be there tomorrow um, at the E Life at 6 p.m., which will be there, B Square. We hope to see y'all there. And it's tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. Be right there at the E Life. E Life with Dr. Baruch and Dr. Malik Zulus Biles will be there. Uh, you know, many leaders, the, the Chief Empress will be there out of. Uh, West Virginia, yes, school educational piece will be in, involved tomorrow. Brother Ali, Brother Pete, Brother Black Lightning, I think Brother Katie Walton, those guys will be there. Brother Black Warrior will be there. And uh, Brother Will will be, two youth ministers, Brother Will and Brother Joseph will be on hand tomorrow. So we're going to light it on up for the brothers and sisters in the hood as best we could. <laughs> Get in where you can fit in. Tip drop and don't stop. Mm-hmm. Black, black revolution. Tell you drop. My, my, my. And all those that, hey, all those that love to uh, love the doc, come on back. Keep on coming back. I think we just go ahead and, hey, my suggestion, but I ain't in charge. The people are, and I'm following the shaky mom Akbar, but I'm thinking we should just go ahead and stick with eight o'clock, you know? Cause they cut out. They they gonna they gonna uh, by the time they come on and start recording us, we still going anyway. You know, so we're not relying on that. We shoot, we ain't relying on no monetization because we already know they're not gonna give us that because we black revolutionaries. They're gonna try their best to stop that. You know, the only way the black revolution is gonna stay on track is if y'all hit that dollar sign seventy seven bakers. You know. I keep playing other people's music. They only gonna give me a little piece anyway. So tonight I'm gonna end it with mine. You just let me know when. Do what you gotta do, Lightning. I just wanna say to y'all tomorrow I'll be there with a concept to begin a war chest. So we don't have to worry about this uh back end, bottom end thing, scraping and scratching for pennies. We gonna have our own sooner than not. Love y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Stay strong. Yes, sir. I can't wait to meet you this time. I like, man. We gonna I'm make on it out, baby. You ain't waiting on shit. Hey, look, I was on the outside and you was on the inside, and I didn't know who to look for, but I know your face now. I'm gonna be looking for you. There you go. 
I'll be back and I'll still be black. <laughs> hey, I probably walked right past you up in there too when I was going over there to get something to drink from the from the uh, from that juice thing. I was going over there I was like, man, I'm thirsty. I said, excuse me, sir. And then and you're like, uh, yes, sir. You're like, <laughs> you say he you sounds know familiar. It. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always love my people. All I'm gonna show is his respect. That's all I got. Yeah, well, we got you covered. Yep. Glad you black on the scene with a gangster lean. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, I'm I'm um, on the air now, but we'll be in person tomorrow. So can't wait uh, to see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, National Chairman, uh, it's on you. Tell me when to hit the button, cause I'm. I'm thinking, man, they give me a little piece of, uh, they give me, they talking about, well, you can get a little percentage of, uh, of, uh, of that other, what was it? Uh, Chuck D say it loud. He said, you can get a percentage of that. Well, guess what? I'm playing mine and I want all of it. And see, that's just it. Chuck D more popular. I'd rather get a percentage of his, <laughs> but that's only a uh, temporary hey, situation. The game? Let's get it on. Hey, that's a temporary situation. I used to always tell my band, they don't know what they want because they ain't never heard our stuff. You know? Yeah. My drummer's like, let's play some oldies but goodies. I was like, man, they don't want that. They want our stuff. He's like, they ain't never heard our stuff. Yeah, right. Exactly. And as soon as they hear it, man, they flooded the dance floor. Flooded it. You know? He had me singing, ooh, baby, baby. And all the, everybody started walking toward the bar. I said, see what you did? I told my drummer, see what you did? <laughs> he said, well, I guess you, when you write, you write. Go ahead, let's do our thing. And we started, we we cranked that shit. And we cranked it up. And next thing you know, uh, there was a guy, oh, man, memoirs of a Black Panther. I'm going to end it on this one. Uh, but uh, I'm going to drop it to you uh, first, Shake. But memoirs of a Black Panther. We were, um, when that happened, um, um, everybody was partying so hard. When you really throwing down like that on stage and you singing like that, the sweat gets in your eyes, and you know, and you really, it's like a blur. Everything's a blur. Everything's a fog, right? I started to jump off the stage and do a kick. And before I jumped, I looked. And it was a guy had another guy on his shoulders. That's how hard they was partying off our music. We play that P-Funk stuff, right? Paul and Funkadelic. Matter of fact, I think we was playing uh, uh, Tatter Roof Off. We playing Tatter Roof Off. And I started to jump off the stage. That was my thing. I said, well, I can't dance like James Brown. I said, but I can, I can do a jump. I can do a jump kick off this stage and make it look like I'm dancing. You know, and I was about to do that, and I'll tell you what, I would have, I would have kicked that guy right off the other guy's shoulders if I had jumped off that stage. So I'm gonna end on that. That's a, that that that's just a memory. That's all. And like brother John Kim and Shabazz say, I should write a book. I'm like, well, if I don't get the chance to write a book, hey, well, actually, Shaky Mama Akbar, I know you laughing to yourself. Say he write me a book every day. <laughs> Uh, a what would you call it? Uh, a no, uh, award award winning novel, a Pulitzer Prize sometime when I get cranked up and I'm like, man, you know what they did? Like, just call me. Please don't 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 write me a book. <laughs> anyway, Black Power, I'm gonna end on that. Black Power, I always gotta let 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 the chairman in the joint so I can put my music on. Are you still with us, uh Shaky Mom Akbar? Black Power. Is it on me? Okay. Should I should I go ahead and hit the button, uh, Big Warrior? Yes, uh, sir. Hit it. All right. Here we go. This is called. Uh, Let's get it on. This is called FOD, Freedom of Death, by yours truly, the MOD. Fight to the last breath. When I'm retreating, freedom of death. I be uplifting and shit. Just a natural lyricist. But 10,000 black messiahs on the rise will exist. Black power. Raise in the air. Black power glove. 
Watch the black people soaring right into the club. Check it out. Looking out with hate. Why you open hours with love? I can't believe you should like I'm having a scare. Rock and roll is one of the chains of the players. Damn, they funny, and we ain't playing. Not mercenary, just a black revolutionary, visionary, military. Black that call for the people, y'all. So many just dropped the ball. Me in the fight down the city hall. Freedom of information, I paper was ready to go. Let go of the video, yo. Maximum utilization of all the building resources. Building up the force. We fight to the last breath, y'all. Ain't gonna retreat this freedom of death. Black power, y'all. Give thanks. Yeah.